hey, what's up, ecosystem? Welcome back to ATI Auto Business. My name is Jay. You know, my goal every Tuesday night is to bring you another trade show level business presentation to you wherever you are because your automotive business deserves the latest in logistics news. And if you're busy, and I know you are, in a minute, I'm going to give the welcome show lineup. If you're watching on demand, you're going to be able to skip ahead using the clickable video timecode links in the video description below. Please feel free to use those. Skip around. Find the parts that apply to you. Get the information. Don't miss industry news. Please do leave a comment. Remember to like, share, tell your friends. Thanks for watching ATI. Far too often, the auto repossession industry, much like auto transport, takes a back seat in business news and transportation discussion presentations. But when there's a big money problem, auctions, auto remarketers, lenders, lien holders, banks are all suddenly ready to listen. So tonight, starring Joel Kennedy, Executive Director of the American Recovery Association, Vaughn Clemens, President, Automobile Recovery Bureau. Renee Lowe, Training and Education, Harding Brooks Insurance Agency. Darcy Case, co-owner of Indiana Recovery Services. Brianna Cox, President, Paradigm Recovery, LLC. Ryan Miller, GM at Northwest Repossession. And Kevin Armstrong, publisher of CURepossession.com. With Ty Thompson as the beaver, I give you the Repo Bunch. So please, join the live chat, ask your questions, share your thoughts, grow your business, break out of your vertical, because it's Tuesday Nights Live on ATI Auto Business. My name is Jay, I'm your host, welcome back to the show. What's up, Ecosystem? Welcome back again to ATI Auto Business. Thank you so much. Thanks for taking the time on a Tuesday night. This is a really busy Tuesday night, actually. Um, it feels like 2023 has finally kicked in. We are here, and NADA show, the probably the second really big trade show of the year. Number one being CES, Consumer Electronics Show. Electronics, now that cars are so electronical uh but nada is huge it is coming up it's this week this weekend kind of thing but i'm getting ahead of myself please do feel welcome go ahead and jump here into the live chat let us know what you're up to say hello we're going to go into the live chat in a few minutes and say hello and yes if you are in auto repo auto recovery this is this is a big moment this is cool because um, recovery is a huge industry, and we're going to talk about all things repo and recovery and more, and we're going to learn together. Wow, we're going to learn? That's so cool. In fact, that's why we do industry news at the quarter hour, which is rapidly approaching, and we're going to move into that quickly. After industry news, we're going to bring in Ty Thompson. Ty and I are going to throw the ball around a little, and, you know, Mom always said, don't play ball in the house. Because then we're going to bring in, we've got the Repo Bunch, starring Joel, Renee, Darcy, Vaughn, Kevin, Brianna, Ryan, and then me and Ty are also in there in the Repo Bunch. Um, it, the, the show idea just came up. 
I was talking to Renee, I think it was before the show on Cars on the Move, and somehow I said the repo bunch, and I thought, you know what, we're just going to do that. We're doing this thing, it's ATI Auto Business, and that's the way we roll. So um, do me a favor, please do leave a like. If you find one just laying around somewhere in the impound lot, that'd be cool. Click share, click copy, grab that YouTube link, send it to a friend, let them know. Listen, man, seriously, we know, I mean, this guy's kind of weird, but this show is, there's something going on here, and, uh, and and we need your help. So if you, it, listen, if you're totally lost, call or text TIE, 417-483-2764. If you're ready to jump on the ATI train, why wait? Stop standing around, looking at each other, saying, you know, this channel started in 2017. I didn't get it then. Maybe I don't get it now, but you know, darn it. There's something going on here. These guys are reaching across. We've gone way beyond just transportation. So join us in our uh, in our quest and for knowledge and uh, connections and community. This is a community. So stay tuned. We'll be right after the back after this in the live chat. Please join us. Everybody wants to be part of a bigger story. Auto transport is a vital part of that story. Vehicle reconditioning starts when your transport arrives at the dealership. The story starts with you. For our auto retail customers, as yours, full satisfaction. Car dealers can see the rapid recon difference with transparent communication through the vehicle reconditioning process, auto remarketing, and dealer inventory management software. Visit rapidrecon.com. Links are in the live chat. Let's get in that live chat. Here we go. So, uh, hey, so let me back this up to the top. Uh, that, that live chat's hopping. Thank you guys so much. Ty was in here first. Cars on the move. ATI Auto Business is where I get my repo updates. And and that's what's cool. We are, we know, curepossession.com. Kevin Armstrong is here. Um, there's also, um, is it Repo America? We need to learn more about each other's media sources and, um, and yeah, we can spread the knowledge that way too. So let's do that. Kimberly is in here. Welcome to Tuesday Night's Live. We're glad you are here. We are absolutely glad you are here with us. And whether you're live or on demand, or maybe you're just replaying this in two years from your time capsule on Mars, thank you so much for doing that. Uh, Bidwell187, my first time. All right. Uh, so Bidwell, question. Is it repo? Is it recovery? Is that where you come from? Or, you know, name your vertical and uh, maybe something you wish to share, something you wish to learn, or or not. You don't have to do any of it. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to. Carlos is here. Hey, what's up? ACV Logistics in the house. Oh, look at this. Ty. Ty. Ty's making martinis in the super chat. Thank you so much, Ty. ATI to the moon. You know, Ty, Ty has always said ATI to the moon, and we're this much closer to actually getting to the moon. So that's pretty cool. Thank you, Ty, so much. Brianna Cox is here. What's up, Brianna? President of Paradigm Recovery in the live chat in the repo bunch. John LAI Auto Transport says, good evening from Florida. John is on the move. Thank you, John. John is a car hauler. Uh, let's see, David Johns, what a great lineup of guests. I know, it is actually incredible. We're so lucky to have the folks with us tonight. It was a little tough getting every, you know, finding the right night, and really there wasn't a lot of uh, heads up, but, um, you know, this is what it means when you love your industry and your community, and you know education is important. The bunch shows up, so thank you so much. Ants, Artie is here. Hello. I never skip. I always watch the full show. You know what's funny, Artie, is that Ty will tell me that he's like, oh, I watched it twice already. I'm like, you know what? This is the thing, and this is what it's all about. If 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 he if Ty and I can start watching just to, I don't know, find something we're like, hey, yeah, well, we're talking, and then find ourselves lost in 20 minutes later, that is the kind of show we want to make. So thank you, Artie. Hopefully that's what we're pumping out. Joe at Car Shipper, howdy everyone. What's up, Joe? Uh, man, the connection of uh, Shipper 
connected to carrier through technology. Wow, that is an exploding marketplace. It's in the news tonight. Brandon J., thank you guys. Good to be back. That's awesome. Thank you. It, we're glad to have you back. Uh, Mark Rodeke, Superflow Systems. Yes, it's two, seven, eight in a row. Thank you, Mark, so much. Uh, as you can see, I'm moving through the live chat because, man, there's so much industry news, I don't even know how I'm going to get to it. Vaughn Clemens, uh, President, Automobile Recovery Bureau. What is up, Vaughn, in the live chat? Oh, Brandon, I'm an auto transporter. Can I capitalize on this? Yes, Brandon. The question is, and here's the thing. So, Ty, this is when we put Ty's phone number in the live chat. You can call or text Ty. Now, you don't have to do this. But it's an option. If you want to talk to somebody about your business, your running lane, your equipment, talking to customers, Ty is the guy to talk to. And he actually answers the phone. I know. It's can't, I can't believe it. Um, how do you know it's not like a scam call, Ty? But he call, he answers every call. It's awesome. So give him a call. Leon Scroggins, good evening. What's up, Leon? Thanks for saying hello, tuning in in the live chat. Welcome to ATI Auto Business to the moon yeah all right cool dot com um what else we got in here rob stevenson is here good evening everyone interstate towing and recovery of ohio what's up rob thanks for saying hello tuning in that's incredible i love i love company names and you know where and but you can't put an email because youtube but if you send it to me dude here and now here's where i put in my email address seems like it seems very repetitive jay seems very infomercially that's right. If you call right now, you get Copper Pot 2000. You'll get two Copper Pots 24,000. Um, you can email me, autotransportintel at gmail.com. It's right there in the live chat. There is no Copper Pot. Not tonight. Different show. See you reposition. See you repossession. Uh, Kevin Armstrong is here in the live chat. What's up, Kevin? See, and, and then I get on the freight train. And then I got to calm down. The only way to really calm down is to have some ELD punch. Because ELD sucks that bad. Really, Jay? Uh, let's see here. Okay, Brandon, I am GTS LLC in St. Louis. Fantastic. Oh, Bidwell is repo. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, no, there's going to be a lot of... There's a lot of information. There's a lot to know. Richard, uh, oh, Richard, hey, thanks for saying hello, man. I think we've seen you before. Gerard is here. See, and you get the bell, too. JT is here. Everybody's ringing the bell. Um, another great time to remind you, and I'll put this in the live chat, speaking of Copper Pot 2000. If you have an extra like, if you can find one laying around anywhere, just, just slap it on the screen for me. Please do leave a like. It really helps our Google Analytics and all that stuff. Uh, it won't save us from demonetization, though. Let's see. Darcy's here. Um, thank you, Darcy. John is here. Attending the repo bunch, James Cargo. Wow. Wow. Kelly Love. Look what Kevin Armstrong did with CURepossession.com. What's happening? Silver Mint. I remember dispatching was a thing. Yeah, amen. Well, it is a thing. And in fact, we still have dispatching live on Thursday this week, even though we'll be at NADA Friday and Saturday. Uh, let's see here. And what else we got? Um, oh, Renee is here. Yeah. Yeah, this is awesome. This is really, really cool. Okay, cool. Wow, that was fantastic. All right, we're right up against industry news. Oh, Marco is here from McAllister's Transportation. Fantastic. Thanks, Marco. Thanks for saying hello. Peterson Ranch Life. Wow. NASA has not made any payments on the rover. Well, so that, we, you know, Ty, Peterson Ranch Life makes a good point. Do we want to go to the moon? They're not paying on the rover. So... Interesting point. Well done there. Yeah, that's fantastic. I'll tell you what, stick around, everybody. We got industry news coming up next. And, oh, is it 19? Oh, just 20 years off? Yeah, forget about it. I think you can leave a car in a repo lot for 20 years. We'll be right back. Transport Auto Quoter is by far the leading auto quoting software on the market and the only auto quoter with a pro version that comes preset with accurate pricing for anywhere in the U.S. So you don't have to worry about it. The best part is that no change with your current software is needed. Just plug TAQ in and start booking jobs. Carriers can easily plug TAQ into their current websites and start making money right away. 
I bet you're wondering how we do this instantly and accurately 24-7. Well, constant analytics is the key. Our Price Watch team is constantly monitoring current market conditions, paying close attention to seasonal and quick-moving industry changes. At the end of the day, it takes a lot of time and data to maintain good pricing, time that most of us just don't have on a daily basis. So free yourself up. Using TAQ Pro is really a no-brainer. Save time and money, maximizing your leads and optimizing your online investments. You'll finally be able to sleep well at night knowing that TAQ is on the job selling for you 24-7. Never missing a potential job. Searching for that midnight auto shipping quote and new lead software you can trust? Provide instant accurate quotes online. The Transport Auto Quoter and move cars fast with Pro ABD CRM. Visit SuperflowSystems.com. Look at that right there. Look at that. <laughs> Making martinis in the super chat. That's Mark Grodicky of Superflow Systems. He loves industry news on ATI. So do we. Thank you so much, Mark. If you have a question, because software is going to come up. If you have a question about Auto Transport Quoter software, um, car shipping quote software, logistics, tracking, CRM, mobile app, TMS. Mark is the man. Superflow Systems is the plan in the live chat. Always here on ATI. Thank you so much. All right. Yes, Marco, you're right. I hope to. Man, NADA, let's get to it. Here we go. Where's my industry news stuff? Here we go. Hey. It's Tuesday Nights Live, 278 in a row. This is the Repo Bunch. Okay, so the Repo Bunch is what's going on here. I kind of teased it up before. Is that, okay, so we did a show last fall, When the Lot is Full. Because when the lot is full, you have a lot of problems. Okay? And then we also did a Cars on the Move with Renee and Darcy just a couple weeks ago. And that's where the ideas started to really swirl. Let's do this thing. Let's put the family together. Let's put the band back together. Let's jump in the van. And let's have some fun. And let's... And let's, let's uh, oh, and we have a song. We even have a song. All good families have a song. We're going to get to the song. But what I want you to do... Make sure you have your... I got my, I got my song lyrics right here. I wrote this... But this is, you know, this is the repo bunch. I mean, it didn't come up with the original jingle or nothing, but uh, it's being shared and talked about. I don't even know how many people have opened the email from today, uh, or, you know, there'll be people at NADA like, yeah, do you, the repo bunch, you caught that too? I'll never be the same. So we talk about ATI, front of the store, back of the store, side of the store, under the store, top of the store. Get to know all the parts. Don't just get comfortable in your in your area. Get out of your comfort zone. We talk about the full ecosystem. You need to break out of your vertical. Well, tonight we're going to break out of that vertical. You know, services is a really big category. And I put the repossession and the services, but it's also a cross-intersection, carriers, equipment, regulations, and serving the auctions and the shippers and more. On ATI, we are always talking about following the disconnect between sales and operations because, gosh darn it, somebody has to. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the dumpster fire in the back of the building that nobody wants to talk about. I know everybody's on the phone. Yeah, you can have it this way, and we'll be in your driveway, and he'll wear this special outfit, and, you know, yeah, yes, sir, hair appointments at the airport. No, no, stop. It's not happening. It's not true. Listen, I know that, you know, we say it is what it is. Well, here we say, listen, I know you want to talk about home delivery, but it's time to talk about any delivery, okay? We'll just, we'll take the car. Can we get the car? Do I need to come pick it up? This week, NADA brings the primetime show back to Dallas. Now, I want to say this is what I, what I really am proud of is if you're sitting at home or in your truck, Wherever you are, you're waiting on your shower, and you're thinking, you know, I don't give a hoot about NADA. Well, we're here to help you. If you, you don't have to give a hoot, but I do want to explain to you what the hoot is all about, all right? 
So, um, we did NADA show Energy a couple weeks ago when we had some executives on the show that are going to be in booths at the show. And there are a lot of amazing companies to get to know and understand. Because once you start to get to know these companies, you start to realize it's all happening at the trade show. And once you realize that, you realize that now that you can't go to the auction and meet people, everything happens at the trade show. If you want to know where companies are scooping up clients... And it's not just one trade show. So NADA show is a big show. This is the show for the dealers. The big, big, big show for the dealers. It's the Disneyland of dealership folks. This is the Star Trek Enterprise of uh, booths. The booths are bigger than ever. Cox Automotive has its own city. Okay. All right. Um, and <laughs> Wait a minute. Where's my Napoleon Dynamite? Oh... Well, listen, if you if you don't know what you're doing and you show up, <laughs> if you show up somewhere large and you have no idea what you're doing, you might get called out. And you don't want that to happen. Don't sit out in the snow not learning nothing, yo. <laughs> we want to help you. All right, I'm serious. Um, put your marketing package together and show up. And if you don't know what you're doing, let us know because we really do want to help you. And even if you can't make it there live, jump in the live chat because it is Suitcase City at NADA. What is suitcasing? Listen, if you're a big company, you want to get a booth. And you want to get your booth and that's where you give your demos and talk about your business. But let's say you don't want to pay for a booth. You just want to be an attendee and walk around and hand out your business card. That is called suitcasing. Now, they don't really like that, but everybody does it. And let me tell you something. Transport companies are going to be suitcase city at NADA. And there ain't nothing wrong. Listen, go promote your business. You can't afford a booth yet. Suitcase. I don't know where that came from. Allegedly. Uh, you know, uh, this, you will actually see transportation talked about in different ways. The truck from the auction waiting for the truck to show up. This is really happening. People are really talking about where's the dumpster fire. Uh, by the way, or am I waiting on the truck or am I waiting on Toyota? Do you see this? Well, somebody left this sitting on the water cooler. How long are you going to wait for that car? Uh, make sure that it's not your problem. Use a technology like McAllister's AutoVista Portal. Thank you, McAllister's. Or is it shipping? It's crazy. Shipping costs exceed repair bills as auto parts shortage continues. It's not good. That's an actual problem. Um, and we want to bring this up. Listen, before, N <laughs> before, N uh, before NADA, you have the NAAA. And we need to talk about this. Um, the NAAA is hosting a meeting event called Total Access. Which is interesting. Uh, because that's a lot of NAAA. Not sure who else has Total Access to all the NAAA meetings. And I did do a show where we cover the ACV lawsuit against AAA, NAAA. Now... I'm just going to ask the question. Is it the NAAA versus blank? Fill in the blank. Is it Cox Automotive versus blank? Fill in the blank. Or is there something else happening? Fill in the blanks. It's up to you. It's You know, it's your community. I don't know what's going on. And by the way, who's caught in the middle? Who's laying in the ditch in the middle here? What, everybody else? I'm just asking the questions. All right, let's keep moving. Theft of vehicles stored on your lots are on the rise. In the last three years, 118 units stolen off lots with a total payout. That's over a billion dollars. No, is that a million? Thank God it's not a billion. <laughs> Learn to read. You and your medieval pictures. Uh, here's an article about an increase in car thefts. But stolen cars usually end up in car containers on chop shops, right? How about stolen by the bank? Auto repossession is off the charts. Check this out. This is crazy. Do you see this photo? It looks, it looks made up. Right? Is that real? It, how do you even... 
Yeah, I think it's this red one. So I just need you to swing on by and pick that up. All right. Memphis impound lot so over capacity, tow truck drivers take to city council for solutions. Uh, it's packed to capacity. Customers, tow truck operators say wait times and fees are agonizing. Having your car stolen or getting into a car accident, hard enough. Losing time. And you just need to find your car. So we got two brothers here. We're going to watch a video here. Um, now the lot is built to t hold 2,000 cars, but it's already 4,000 plus. Um, and nothing's changed since the 80s and the 90s. The wait is really long. Took this tow truck driver... Uh, he declined to give his name. He spent 11 hours waiting to pick up a car on his record. So this is impacting everybody. The cars are packed together. They're bumper to bumper. Some are crushed against each other. A forklift driver has a tough getting around. Potholes <laughs> that would swallow a semi. And, uh, oh, and the city of Memphis pays 125 bucks a tow. That hasn't changed in 16 years. So let's go ahead and roll the video. Here we go. Um, here, here comes the video. I'll be right back. Loan. First of all, let's be honest, when you get into a car accident or your car gets stolen, it's traumatizing, right? Well, then you have to go down to the MPD's impound lot and try and find your car. It will require a great deal of patience and money. That's if they can even find it. Wait until you see this video. It's like these cars, these, like these cars, these are target yeah, cars. Target, like, so these are the cars like, that the like bad these, people the want. Clifford Bynum and his brother Talon spent all day at the Memphis Police impound lot in Frazier recovering his stolen car. Five, yeah, six hours. Yeah, 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 I'm sure. missing work. I'm missing work. There's money that I'm supposed to be making right now. The lot is built to hold about 2,000 cars. But with the city's explosion in car thefts, 4,000 plus vehicles are now crammed in. A tow truck driver who spent 11 hours waiting to pick up a car told us. Best way to put it, the forklift has a hard time getting around. I mean, there is potholes that would swallow a semi. More frustrated tow truck operators went before the Memphis City Council Tuesday. There were 80 companies on rotation 10 years ago when I started my company. Now it's down to about 40. The reason is it's not economically viable. That's part of the problem you're having with tow truck response times for the police. We can't afford to keep tying up trucks at a low rate that we're receiving now. We need an increase. The city currently pays towers $125 a tow, a price that has not changed in 16 years. A company called Auto Return got us started in San Francisco. Made a presentation to council on streamlining the towing process using a new dispatch system. But when the tow operators were asked what they thought, and I'm not certain if they're for this or against this. No, no, absolutely not. Our issue here in the city is not dispatch. Our issue in the city is at the end. Impound lot. An impound lot overflowing with cars and long wait times and customers who say the city needs to fix it and fast. I mean, it's messed up type stuff. It's messed up. It's messed up that the car got stole in the first place. Oh no, it's messed up, bro. It's ridiculous. It's it's time for a change. Okay, so there you go. You heard it. Uh, you saw it. It's hitting the news, and uh, please do feel free to send in the news. Send me more information, autotransportintel at gmail.com. Send in your comments, whatever you've got to add to it, uh, because this is how we get our car shipping business news. It is on ATI Auto Business, and thanks again for jumping in the live chat. Really do appreciate it. Who wants to play some trivia? Now, I wish I had a trivia question from that video, but I do not, but I have some other great uh, trivia questions straight from the Repo Bunch. Here we go. You know that every Tuesday night I got five new questions. Are you a car shimmy guru? Let's play Ask Larry. Five new questions powered by ATI and Superflow. Here we go. Question one. Where can you park a car for 10 days or more for free? Concert venues, impound storage lots, repossession lots, or cube smart stuff storage? Concerts? Yeah, I don't think so. Impound storage lots? <laughs> well, that apparently could be the answer. Repo lots? Oh, is it for free, though? Oh, for free. Cube Smart Stealth Self Storage. Yeah, I have a feeling Cube Smart's going to know that I parked there and, like, you know, went off to watch The Grateful Dead for a year. Probably. So, what's the answer? 
Uh, sounds like car hauling. It sure does, doesn't it? Boy, oh boy, this sounds like car hauling. The answer, we got repo lot. Ty says repo lot. John says repo lot. In your driveway. See, Rob, that's good. I, Yeah. And e, oh, Carrie's got nowhere. <laughs> In Boston. I can't find my car. Okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. The answer is... Let's see, letter reveal. There we go. And it is repossession lots. Oh, how nice. For free? Oh, that's so nice of you. All right, question two. Here we go. What is a voluntary repossession? A regular tow anyone can, with tow insurance can perform. Consumer contacts lender provides contact info, time and date of repo, surrenders keys, and required insurance. This one's meaty. When a consumer allows the lender to recover a vehicle without any prior notification. Ooh, no notification? That's voluntary? Hmm, that sounds like a headlock repossession. Uh, consumer contacts the lender. No contact info. No time and date provided. No repo insurance required. That would be... Please don't repo? Um, this is a voluntary repossession. There'd be no way to live chat this. A regular tow, anyone with tow insurance can perform. Well, hopefully you're learning some of Carlos has it. Carlos has number two. Uh -huh. There we go. Oh, no. Sorry, Carlos. I did it again. <laughs> Carlos is like, what? What happened? What, what did I do? Carlos, consumer contact lender, provides contact info, time and data, repo, surrenders, keys, and required insurance. Now, why would you do that? Is really that is the the big question, and we want to learn that today. Why would a customer do a voluntary repossession? Right, Carlos. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Oh, I'm gonna have to get out the uh, uh, the pie. We'll give uh, yeah, get a pie to the face. Here we go. Question three. If a company suspects a driver to be intoxicated or high, what should they do? Let them complete their shift, because we're short on drivers. Immediately send them home. Request they drive themselves to be drug tested. Complete a reasonable suspicion form and have someone drive them to be tested. Well, this is a sobering question. Just the thought, just, just hearing on the phone. Yeah, we're going to need you to... Wow. We're going to need you to fill out a form and, and we're going to send somebody to drive you to be drug tested. Ow. That is, wow, is that what happens? Gnarly. Um, what do you guys think? Required insurance? Right, see? It is. And I'll tell you, I had to shorten these. There's so much to it. Oh, we got number four, number four. Whoops. Complete a reasonable suspicion form and have someone drive them to be tested. Is the answer. Well, this is the thing, Carrie. See, and here's one of the things that really got my attention early on is, you know, when we when we move, here we are in auto transport, and I got my repo hammer, and I'm laughing, right? Uh, and then I find out, because we think that they don't want us to pick it up so they can keep, you know, ringing the register. Then we find out that's not what happens. They're not ringing the register. So who is? Why is it so hard to pick up a repo? Why doesn't it pay more? What is going on? Who's benefiting? And then we see like these lots full of cars and we realize, man, these folks are getting shafted just like we are. All right, question four. Who collects the revenue from repo storage fees? Lender collects all revenue generated while vehicles stored at recovery agents lot. Consumers given a check to cover loss of useful vehicles stored at agent's lot. Repo storage fees and repo fees are the same. When storage is allowed by lender forwarder, recovery agents invoices for agreed storage rate. Ah, keyword allowed. Ooh. Why wouldn't you always be allowed? Drink Gatorade? <laughs> puff, puff, pass. I was going to, Rob, I was going to say, or uh, E, join the party. Huh? Okay. It's not funny. Who collects the revenue from repo storage fees? Right? We could learn a lot from the recovery industry. And then align with them 
and do something about it, right? Or we could whine on Facebook. Yeah, let's whine on Facebook. Um, who collects the revenue from repo storage fees? Kelly says it's the last answer, number four. There we go. There's the applause. Who collects the revenue from repo storage fees when storage is allowed? Recover HC invoices for agreed storage rate. This is not a gouging situation. No, it's not. Question five. When a lien is lost, but vehicle repossessed from new owner, who's liable? The holder of the lien is responsible prior to assigning the account for repossession. The company who recovered the unit is liable. The previous consumer has a duty to notify the lender once the lien is lost. No one is liable since the vehicle is repossessed. This one's hard. If you made it this far, you're a gladiator. Yeah. Good question. Why Why wouldn't they be allowed? Yeah, now this is crazy. Yeah, okay, and Brianna's laying in the, uh, here comes the knowledge train. Woot, woot. Okay. There's no, there's no woot, woot. What is the answer? Some lenders allow storage fee collections, some do not, most do not. See, there you go. If they don't allow it, you can't charge it. And that's when the, uh, that's when you get the Dobermans and the, uh, you know, you're cranking the bass and I guess you just do whatever you want. That's where, that's where auto recovery becomes like auto transport. You do whatever you want. No, you can't, you can't do, you can't do whatever you want. You won't stay, you, you'll lose your license. You'll lose your insurance. And then where are you? You know? You're out in the snow with a desk. With an iron boot. Anybody else love the movie Airplane? Okay, let's move on. What's the answer to this question? Classified docs? All right, here we go. Do we have an answer? The holder of the lien is responsible prior to assigning the account for repossession. That makes, that makes sense. Oh, you guys got it. Carlos got it. Kelly got it. James got it. All right, I think we have one more. We're not doing any transport quotes tonight. We got one more repo question. Here we go. What is the average time a vehicle stays on a repo lot? Zero to five days, six to 10 days, 11 to 15 days, or 16 plus days? Man, there's some amazing info going on in the live chat. This is awesome. Thank you, repo bunch. Wow. Uh, let's see here. What is the average time a vehicle stays on a repo lot? Anybody? Average time a vehicle stays on a repo lot. I'm going to go with longer than zero to five because, you know, when you post it, when, when whoever allegedly posted at rock bottom rate, uh, five days have gone by. Plus you have to set an appointment, pick it up. Hmm. Rob's got 11 and 15 days. Carlos has 16 plus days. See, if I had my druthers, which I rarely do, i go with 16 plus. Brandon's got 16 plus. Then you see James is somewhere between 11 to plus. This is a good one. This is the tiebreaker. If you made it this far, this is going to, this is going to put you over the top. Depends on the city. Kelly, we didn't work that in. Oh, we didn't get that? Yeah, Kelly, we don't have that. All right, here we go. Got to keep the show moving, Jay. It's already 7.40. The answer is? It's 11 to 15 days. Now, right, when you take the aggregate, the cumulative average... But it's interesting. Listen, according to according to everybody who works here, it's sixteen plays, sixteen plays dust. Yeah, all right, that's pretty well done. All right. So, anyways, yep. All right. Well, it is time for me and my ELD punch uh, to take a quick break. We're going to be right back after this. We got some serious industry news. If you're going to NADA or not, you're just looking to build business. You aren't going to want to miss the second half. Business development managers, stick around. We'll be right back. 
McAllister's has been around for over 76 years, and we're known as providing our customers with high-level, white-glove, concierge-style services. We provide our customers solutions in both transportation, logistics, and warehousing. We take a very different approach than most auto logistics companies. Our approach is one of being consultative and adaptive to the auto industry. Our approach saves time and money while providing tangible data, which helps improve processes. McAllister's offers a unique tech solution, which we call our Auto Vista Portal. It's a cloud-based solution. It provides the ability for our dealership partners to access it using any device they want whenever they need. Most auto logistics company just want to deliver your car. We want to do more than that. All of those measurements that are important to you to run your business and understand where your costs are, McAllister's Auto Vista technology supports that. It's a car shipping performance data management tool. That's why car dealers love the Auto Vista portal by McAllister's Transportation Group. Find out what you're missing. Visit McAllister's.com. Links in the live chat. All right, thank you very much. Here we go. Industry News Part 2. Attention business development managers. Your weekly pulse on ATI. I'm telling you, there's so much news going around that all you got to do is check it out here. We'll try to keep it moving, and let's go. Okay, top of the news. Carvana adopts a poison pill. Did you see this? There's videos, there's articles, there's all types of ways to learn more about this. Selling $4 billion worth of auto loans. That's right. They may be down, but they are not out. Carvana has adopted a poison pill to limit shareholders from raising their stakes. It has reached an agreement to sell up to $4 billion in auto loans to Ally Bank and Ally Financial. They're going to buy the loans, giving Carvana a fresh source of funding as it tries to restructure its operations. Carvana said the poison pill will help safeguard its significant U.S. federal net operating loss, NOLs, that could be available to offset its future taxable income. The company's ability to use the NOLs would be substantially limited if its 5% shareholders increased their ownership. Companies with large NOLs often adopt poison pills to enable them to cut their tax bill. Poison pills are also adopted to ward off hostile takeovers. Poison pills is actually something said in financial circles, I guess. Uh, CarMax announced they're the first wholesale auction in the U.S. using UVI's technology to deliver AI-enhanced photographs of vehicles. That's right, CarMax and UVI. Put it in your book. Uh, there's even a YouTube video so you can learn more about it. Since CarMax strategically invested, ooh, invested in UVI, in 2021, Ty, I didn't know that. Did you know that? Both companies have been working together on innovative inspection solutions for the auction space. And that's pretty recent. Velo buys Velocity Automotive and Rapid Recon doing what? Uh, Velo, V-E-H-L-O, which provides software and financial solutions for the auto repair industry, has purchased Rapid Recon and Velocity Automotive. Two titans in reconditioning. The acquisition of the two software providers extends Velo's fixed ops customer experience products beyond the customer pay side of the business. It's existing fixed cops. Fixed cops? It's existing fixed ops customer experience products include Dealer Logics, Service Lane E Advisor, and Text to Drive. Wow, just scooping up software. Hugh Hathcock, he is with Velocity Automotive, founded it. And then Dennis McGinn, founder of Rapid Recon, under one roof, happening now. Motway, Auction Edge partner to offer one-click transport ordering on Edge Pipeline. You want to know this. What does that mean? Okay, less than two weeks after announcing a merger with Auction Direct Transport, Motway made another move in the wholesale auto sector. The third-party logistics company announced a partnership with digital remarketing tech provider Auction Edge. Check this out. What's Auction Edge? Oh, uh, only 55,000 dealers use it. 175 auctions use it to move their inventory. And now they can order transportation services from Montway with it. 
Edge Pipeline designed to connect auctions with dealers looking to sell or acquire inventory. This partnership essentially provides one-click transportation ordering on that platform. Huge deal. Huge. Uh, in other news, Mannheim buys, uh, well, I don't know how to say this. I'm just going to tiptoe around it. Um, even though ACV came up with the undercarriage photo system, now Mannheim has acquired synthetic applies technologies. Uh, now they're doing undercarriage, which is awesome. And that'd be more awesome if, uh, they didn't pick up Fusion Gantry, which gosh, that seems like Black Widow, but I'm just going to keep moving. Where was that medieval photo? Tesla CEO Elon Musk starts EV price war with GM, Ford. Uh, oh, Bank of America analysts shared their stance. Tesla's recent price cuts, you've seen these, has resulted in higher sales volume growth. Tesla has caught headlines recently after the company initiated a round of steep price reductions. The Model Y is looking better than ever. Some buyers are saving over 20 grand. Here's the list. Um, Model 3, saving 3, 9 grand. Look at those numbers. Whoa, on the Model S, you can save 21. Model X, wow. That's going to be a game changer. And in fact, such a game changer, Tesla has become Germany's top-selling EV, overtaking Volkswagen. I can do that. I'm German. Allegedly. Okay, Auto Hauler Exchange launches new online marketplace that transforms how shippers and carriers connect. I told you, Joe, everybody keeps talking about this. This is the thing. So the race started years ago, and now it's heating up because Auto Hauler Exchange is now on the map. New marketplace digitizes vehicle logistics and eliminates the middleman, making vehicle hauling faster, easier, and more profitable. Uh, new haul, new. Auto Hauler Exchange, AHX, connects rigorously vetted large and small vehicle haulers, which will be, that will be an interesting point to examine. How is the vetting going? Uh, also streamlines the shipping process, cuts shipping delays, reduces empty space on carriers, easy to use online portal, remarketers, dealers, fleet, rental car, auction, manufacturers, leveraged by carrier relationships with AHX, Vetted to have the correct authority, insurance, and safety ratings. Carriers on the exchange can now move vehicles for large-scale shippers they would not previously had an opportunity to work for. Hybrid valuations beat EV and gas on ACV. Um, when gas prices shot up in the first half of 2022, so did demand for used EVs. And the auction values rose when gas prices began to ease up. EV values at auctions softened. But hybrid values held their own and have continued to do so. The first hybrid vehicle sold on the modern U.S. market, Honda Insight, was in 1999. But it was the Toyota Prius in 2000 that really made everybody go nuts over hybrid. In 2022, over 800,000 hybrid vehicles were sold up to 76% compared to the previous year. Hybrids accounted for 5% of light vehicle market in 2022. That's how giant automotive is. Volvo takes stake in autonomous tech developer Wabi. I know, nobody wants to talk about autonomous. Volvo invests in self-driving tech company Wabi as it moves towards autonomous company. Autonomous trucking. Uh, the investment division of Volvo made an undisclosed investment in Canadian autonomous driving tech Wabi. The investment by the company that manufactures Volvo and Mac. Oh, see? Ah, uh, yeah. Mac? How do you like autonomous Mac? Okay. Fully autonomous trucking would add freight capacity, increase efficiency through better utilization of expensive Class A trucks, and improve safety. Said trucking industry is challenged by persistent driver shortage, increased freight demand, and long trends at times. But, you know, we can just... Well, let's just... We should just keep arguing on Facebook. This can't be right. Floor plan revenue expected to dive after years as a profit source. Rising inventories and higher interest rates are behind the expected drop in floor plan revenue. Okay? Don't sleep yet because I'm going to tell you, you're going to hear the word. It's coming up. Net floor plan interest for the six major publicly held dealership groups was a big expense for retailers in 2019 before turning into a profit center. 
as rates tumbled and floor plan assistance from automakers offset interest costs. But that lift is projected to fall this year because of higher rates. What's floor planning? The money spent to keep the inventory on the lot. So, we expect interest rates to go higher. Our inventories have been at all-time lows, so the combined impact of more cars, more inventory, and higher rates is certainly going to add to our overhead. And if that's the case, we told our stores, if they can't sell it, and they have it in stock a reasonable amount of time, we're going to transfer it to another store. Can you say dealer trade? <laughs> Not only cuts down on the floor plan, but sell more vehicles, be more sales efficient in those stores. We need to get those cars moving, yo. The latest numbers on the microchip shortage cuts, res cuts, cuts resume. I was going to say cuts resume. Cuts resume worldwide. Uh, what are we talking about with the chip shortage this year? North America, just under a million just this year. Really, this is still happening? Yes, this is still happening. It's probably still going to be happening next year. Total, global, oh, just over, shy over two and a half million vehicles short because of the chip shortage. Awesome. How's your iPhone? Uh, Lithium Motors and talks to buy Jardine Motors in the UK. Now, I realize what J... Well, dude, Lithia was in the Auto Transport 22 for a reason. Man, they really are global. Jardine Motors, part of the conglomerate uh, in Europe's 23rd largest dealership group by revenue. Lithia views the potential acquisition of Jardine Motors as a platform for future growth in the UK. Get in with Lithia. Don't wait. Four dealer security cameras thwart false claims. We just did a security camera show. This caught my eye. Security's camera system has saved Jovic Ford in Plano, Illinois, three to four grand a month on scratch and dent repairs that customers used to accuse workers of causing. Customers accusing workers of causing damage. Sounds like what? Repo recovery and transport? Uh, here we go. Here's your system. The store can determine whether a scratch or dent was already there when a customer drives on the property. Or in cases where the dealership did cause the damage, management can pinpoint when and how it occurred. We've had people come up and say, you damaged our car! We pull up the video and say, sorry, but the damage was here ahead of time. Exits that way. Pretty slick. I mean, the, the monitor's right there. Let's... <laughs> Who wants to show me the video, Bob? Tell him what he's won. Flood damaged cars from California are about to hit the used market. You know about the floods in California. We have talked about the floods in Florida. We've also talked about the floods in Texas. There's lots of flood cars hitting. And so this is also going to be mentioned tonight on the Repo Bunch. So get your song lyrics ready because we're here. It's almost time. When you see this, you're dealing with an ATI podcast. Get the podcast. It's such a long show. You've got things to do. You're busy. It's ATI Auto Business. We're busy, too. That's why we want to make sure you get the news, and we want to get it to you quickly so you can get back on the road, get back on with your life. 417-483-2764. That is Ty's cell phone. Call or text. All right. Here we go. Uh, oh, just a reminder. We're in the AVC dealer app. That's Auction V Commerce. Check this out. Meet your new digital auction assistant. Download ABC Dealer. Now at America's Auto Auction Erie. There is Kelly Bianchi. She is... Oh, you can't see her. She's at the bottom of the photo. But uh, she was on a recent show, Auction Experience, on the Apple Store, Google Play. And if you click watch, you can watch ATI inside the app. Thermonuclear Thursdays. Don't miss it on Dispatching Live. Please do join us. We'll be back on Thursday. Oh, man, do we have another doozy. Oh, God. Why do companies do this? I tell companies. Listen, I say, I see you at the show. Listen, you don't like what happens on Dispatching Live? Then stop doing stupid stuff on load boards. Oh, tune in Thursday. Sorry. Sorry, not sorry. E-Block Live Auction was on Friday. That was an awesome show. Cars on the Move. No Cars on the Move Friday because we're going to be live at NADA. We're going to be live on Friday, 10 a.m. We're going to be live on Saturday, 10 a.m. Yeah, exactly. Or just go to Facebook <laughs> and just argue about stuff. You know, if you, when you leave a comment somewhere, 
get ready to lose the rest of the day. Or, you know, or you can get to business with ATI, the Car Stupid Business Channel. I mean, you know, I'm just saying. You do it. You, you do whatever you want. It was the dispatcher. All right, here we go. Stick around right after this. We're going to be live with Ty. We're not going to waste much time before we bring in the repo bunch. We'll be right back with Ty. Stick around. Ship Your Car Now presents Integrated Automotive Transportation Solutions. When your car buying customers are on your dealership website shopping for vehicles, they can easily find an instant shipping quote. By entering simple information, first name, last name, email, and phone number, delivery zip, delivery state, and clicking the button, get your shipping quote. Choose from express shipping, enclosed transport, and proceed to checkout. Review the order summary. Enter the delivery street address and city and click next. Simply enter your credit card information just like any other online shopping cart. And when you are ready, click review your shipping order. Check your shipping order one more time and choose proceed to checkout. Your delivery is all set. If you want to ship your car now, go to ship your car now. Ship Your Car Now provides a full suite of vehicle shipping services for all types of businesses. That's why Ship Your Car Now offers trusted carriers, good paying loads that pay fast. Visit ShipYourCarNow.com. Links in the live chat. Here we go. To help me welcome the Repo Bunch, he's back again. Live on ATI. Your friend of mine, Ty Thompson. What's up, Ty? Hey, how are you, buddy? Hey, what's up, man? How you doing? Good job. Good, good. Can you hear me all right? I hear you. I see you. No feedback. We're yeah, good. No feedback. Yeah, exactly. It's no um, problem. been watching yeah. the live chat. There's a lot of things that happen in this channel that, like, people like you and I notice. Like, it's always good to see who's in the live chat, and it's always good to see who you maybe you haven't seen in the live chat before, right? So, um, just several people in there that are. <clears throat> thank you for coming by. Good to see you. Yeah, um, <laughs> it is well done. Yeah, uh, it is. It's neat to see. And let's go to the live chat. Pull up the live chat. It's neat to see folks in the live chat that we either we do know, we don't know, we haven't seen in a while, we've never seen before. Um, and I tell you, this proves actually why it's important to to kind of go around the to spin the wheel of automotive verticals. You know, auctions, dealers, recovery, tech consigners and that keeps expanding the network and then you'll randomly see somebody from one of those other verticals show up on a show mm. and it's wonderful it is it's neat um it's <clears throat> yeah wow it's a pretty big deal and i'm um, you know looking forward to this week i'm gonna leave uh, early thursday morning headed down to dallas i got a hold of keith gayhart remember keith gayhart oh good yeah, uh, he said that I could swing by and he would give me the tour of the Toyota North America plant down there, whatever that Get is. Get out of here. Well, now, where, do you know where that is? Is that in Texas? Yeah, yeah. That's it where is. he hangs out. Because yeah. I was going to say California, but something told me Texas. They moved recently, like in the last oh, okay. five years. Okay. Something like, maybe, and, for sure, 10. They and, definitely I, I, and I believe, um, who, Keith. I believe Keith is saying that they have their own in-house logistics department, which is rare for an OEM, right? Yeah, yeah, they're big time. I'm, yeah. I'm going to take him up on the offer and yeah. uh, go see That'd what I can amazing. learn and come back. Like maybe, wow, maybe even talk about it on the next show. Next right. Season. We won't be going live there. <clears throat> it's going to be a no, no, no go no, on no, cameras. No, no. Yeah, yeah. But um, but yeah, well, we get he, maybe, another. Maybe he'll let you talk about. It. Right. So just so everybody knows, I'm really excited about the repo bunch tonight. I really am. I know, and I'm not too. trying to get off track, but no, I, there is a, something coming up that I'm really excited about as well. We're going to do an equipment show on the cars on the move on a Friday. We're going to have some equipment people. We're going to have some mechanic people. It's going to be a great show. And I'm looking forward to it because we don't talk about that stuff much. Now, maybe not as much as we well, should, but it's an important part it, of the process. It, hey, let, let, I'm going to let the I'm going to let the cat out of the bag for a second. There's a reason why we don't talk about some of those things that much, and it is because some of the companies that should be super excited to talk about it with us are like, well, I don't know, <sighs> you know, like yeah. really, 
What are you talking about? You yeah. run ads, don't you? You do well, know what you like, right? You've been in magazines. Yeah, well, in equipment, you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, in the live chat, this was the I don't live know about chat. that YouTube thing. They were uh, maybe it's, talking maybe about it's the style of the show. repo equipment, too. We're too off the cuff. That's a lot to talk about. Repos, repo equipment, tow trucks, the sneakers. Have you heard about sneakers? Actually, I do know. I know what a sneaker lift is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we could, and you know, uh, here's another show. I'll yeah, go ahead and, cool. I don't know if this is, uh, if I can do this live or not, but I'm going to do Absolutely. it anyway, just for fun. Guess we're going to be at a repo yard on a Cars on the Move on a Friday. Did you know when? that? When? I'm going to go February... Uh, <laughs> oh, it's time for the quiz show music. Where's the where's Larry? When where's Larry is when you need time him? going to be live on a repo lot next month? Yeah, is it? Question. Let me give it. I gotta get up the files here. Is it? Is it February third, February tenth, February seventeenth, or February twenty fourth? The third, the tenth, the seventeenth. The 17. I'm going 17. 17. 17. It is the 17th. Ty will be live. On the 17th. And I'm really looking forward to that. And is it okay to say who, where? Yeah. Can we do what's that? going on? Yeah. Oh, the, Brianna said it. Right, it's in the live chat on the 17th. No. Yeah, she wow. did. Wow. She gets all the bonus points. Wow. Good <laughs> she job, gets all Brianna. The bonus points. Yeah. <laughs> so Ty will be live in Houston mm -hmm. with Paradigm Recovery. Uh, yeah, Brianna, Brianna and Corey. Corey spend time, learn all about it. Well, yeah, they're good. They're gonna already, cool. like, they're going to show me like stuff and I'm really excited yeah. about it. It's really nice. I really appreciate it. I'm looking, uh, really but, looking forward to that. And trip. I, you're going to see firsthand, you know, it's funny when you get into auto transport or trucking, you think I just need a truck and a wheel and drive, right? Little mm -hmm. do you know, you need to become a lawyer because of the FMCSA. Well, welcome <laughs> to repo. Right? We, we just had six <laughs> trivia questions that literally will add two years or take two years off your life because, wow. Right? Well, I was like, reading the, the live chat while you were doing that. Brianna in there just back and forth. I, I mean, crazy. I was saying, dude, she knows all kinds. I know everybody that's going to be on the panel knows all kinds. Of stuff, but I'm just like, I don't think I could do it. It's, it seems like you really need to know a lot. But, uh, a ton. You know, yeah, I know. Yeah. I'm, I'm, that's I, why I'm excited tonight. They're going to tell us all my, about it. Yeah, well, we are. That's what, And that's what the Repo Bunch is all about, is to <clears> shed light. There's a lot of topics. I've got a list of topics here. I'll just I'll just bring this up for a second. Um, where's my list of topics? Yeah, well, why are you oh bringing my that gosh. up? Major on. lenders, insurance requirements, storage, Equipment. forwarders, technology, lien holders. Oh, my gosh. Did you did you hear? Did you watch that video? You saw that video earlier? And they were doing the city council thing or whatever. And then they're talking about dispatchers. It was the dispatcher. <laughs> and, then they, and, and then they were talking about technology. And the question was, did technology fix it? And the answer was like, no. Yeah. We don't use that. So, mm. I mean, it is such a mess. There's so yeah. much to talk about. Well, the, you, you had a LinkedIn post. And anybody that's in the live chat that's not on LinkedIn, I really recommend you get on LinkedIn. It's the business Facebook. I'm but glad you said that. Crap. That's right. That's right. Boy, oh, boy. If you're going to spend your time on a social media platform, mm. close Facebook and get on LinkedIn. Yeah. I mean, I would. you can argue. Sure. Yeah, I know. Now Mike Pence has documents in his garage. Listen, man, I know. Okay? <laughs> Everybody's got documents in their garage, all right? Get on LinkedIn and learn something, okay? <laughs> By the way, uh, <laughs> we're going to have to go to commercial. Yeah, you better cut. Oh, no. Here we go. All right, in stereo. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to bring in the repo mm. bunch. It is time. So let's warm up the drum roll and let's get it going here. Um, it is now time to bring in these guys. Gosh, I'm not ready at all. Man, there's a whole crew to bring in here. Let's go to the live chat while we do this. Brianna, Darcy, Joel, Kevin, Renee. Kevin's in here twice. 
Ryan, Vaughn, uh, let's see, the repo bunch is coming in now. Really not enough warning. Um, I'll go ahead and mute the audio for a second. And I do want to say this. This is what I wanted to say, is that um, Jay was talking about, let me pull these out for a second. Jay was talking about, I should come down, there it is. I should come down to NADA show. Now, here's what's interesting, is that um, NADA is a wild, that's why I pulled up the... Uh, image of uh from revenge of the nerds where he's calling out nerds listen if you do go to nada you better have your a game all right you got to know your um you got to know your elevator pitch and everything else all right we now have a significant bunch on the repo bunch here we go ladies and gentlemen first time ever on ati joel you better turn on that video i want to see that i want to see that handsome suit oh i I thought it was on sorry (laughs) The repo What's up? bunch What's up? is live. Oh my gosh! Wow. Hi guys. Wow. Where's Kevin? Yeah, we're missing Kevin. Oh wait. Can we text him? Let's we're missing Vaughn. Now he. What about had, Joe? He had two instances. Joel, so, where's Joel? Joel is here. I'm right here, brother. Wow. Oh, Take hey, it away, Joel. guys. Right wow. here. Oh, we got there. He is. Hey, Joe. There he is. Okay, Kevin. Oh is, yeah. I think Kevin is joining. Yeah, We've got nine sure. nine squares to fill for the Brady Bunch. Right, Am I right? Exactly. Is it nine squares? It is nine squares. Well, you know what's interesting is the middle <clears> square <throat> is the logo. Yeah. What's so up? Oh, it is. Is. Yeah. Brady That's... Bunch is is eight. We actually well, have nine. Well, ours if, goes if I, to eleven. I, I, I'm I'm a fan of the middle square being Paul Lind for for the old folks in the crowd. I don't know if you mm. remember Ho- the Hollywood was it Hollywood Squares? <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> Boy, so all right. So where do we start? All right, let's do this. Let's try to find some. I'm gonna name. I'm gonna name a name, and I want you to say hello. And you've got 20 seconds on the buzzer. Then we're gonna go to the next person, and we're gonna kick this off. Ready? Joel. Hello. 18 seconds left. <laughs> I, I'm so. I, I, I thought you just said we were supposed to say hello. <laughs> say hello. Your title, what you're doing, where you're from, and why you're here. Please. My name's Joel. I'm with the American Recovery Association. We represent uh, the nationwide organization that represents the the, the best trained, most professional uh, repossession uh, agents in the well, let's, the universe. The universe. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> All right, good. It's hard to go first. All right, Vaughn, you're up next. Vaughn, go. Here. Vaughn Clemens. I'm representing the ARA and Automobile Recovery Bureau out of Houston. 15 seconds left. Nothing else to say, bro. Let's go. <laughs> Let's do this Let's go. Okay. Right. Vaughn's ready to go. Ready to go. Let's, Let's go. get it. All right. Renee Lowe. I'm Renee Lowe. I'm the training education coordinator for Harding Brooks Insurance, who ensures the majority of the repo bunch and the majority of those in the uh, live chat. Go Harding Brooks. Go Harding Brooks. <laughs> Actually, I talked to John Larrick today. John Larrick is with Harding Brooks. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Uh, Darcy Case. Hi, Darcy Case, co-owner of Indiana Recovery Services. Indiana Recovery She's Services. She's so has, much more. She's much, amazing. Yeah, yeah, it, Darcy's plus, amazing. How much equipment do you all have? I don't know. A lot. Too much. <laughs> Too much. Ask Renee. My insurance is a lot. Because <laughs> we have a lot. I got to talk to Todd. That's right. Ty I, is Darcy's husband. Yeah, take it away, Ty. I got to talk to Todd. He called. It was awesome. I love Todd. I'm gonna, I've got to go best. to Indiana. Yeah. Are we going to have to fight over him? Well, my, well wait. I heard you guys. Yeah, we're going to do a show Ozark. in March called "Fighting Over Todd." <laughs> <laughs> my Todd. Brianna, you're up next. <laughs> Brianna. Hi guys, you've seen me on the show a few times before. My name is Brianna Cox. Um, I am the co-owner of Asset Resolutions and Paradigm Recovery uh, in Houston. Vaughn is actually one of my competitors. Um, I am also the president of Texas ARP, the Texas Accredited Repossession Professionals State Association. And I joined Vaughn. Uh, Vaughn, of course, is the president, but I do join Vaughn on an ARA committee. Uh, I'm on the marketing committee for ARA. So go Harding Brooks, go ARA, go Texas ARP, and our other state associations here. Fantastic. All right. And Ryan Miller. Hey, how you doing? Ryan Miller with Northwest Prepossessions out of Chicago. 
I'm the GM for the company there. I'm also the uh, board member, one of the board members for the Alliance of Illinois Repossessors. Fantastic. Repo Ryan. Repo, call him Repo Ryan. Repo Ryan. <laughs> Repo Ryan. Hey, it's it's Repo Ryan. I love it. I Saying love Ryan it. Miller sounds so formal. All right. Now, yeah. Kevin is still joining. Uh, Hi, Kevin. I, and I, we've had a Zoom meeting before, so I know that I know that he'll he'll be here. Um, but at least you know we see the square. He's keeping us in suspense. Kevin, why do you do this to us? You always keep us in suspense. All right, he's so we can see you now. Kevin, can you see us? Can you hear us? Maybe. Once we get Kevin lined up, I'm going to go to camera one. Um, we're, we've got. Do you guys all have your song lyrics ready? Well, can I plug Kevin real quick? Yeah, please. Yeah, take that off. So if anybody wants to know a little <clears throat> bit more about the repossession industry, Kevin actually um, penned a book during COVID. It's called Repo Blood. Um, you can buy it directly through Kevin's publisher or you can buy it on Amazon. Uh, it's a fabulous book um, that kind of explains why our industry is so um, tight knit and interconnected and um, kind of explains the history of our industry. It's a fascinating read. Um, and he worked, he, he, he created a work of art. It's really, really a cool piece. And, um, and he also does CU collector and CU repossession, um, which is a huge media source, not just for the repossession industry, but our, um, but the auto finance space in general. I'm so glad you said that. I didn't know he had that. I mean, I knew he was a writer. The book is available on Amazon. The link is in the live chat. Yeah, and I'll have Kevin post the link for Good his, call. you know, where you can buy it from his publisher. But, it, you know, it's not a, a long, long read, but it's, I think everybody on this panel has probably read it. And it's, mm -hmm. in, it's an incredible, interesting read that will give you some insight to the repo industry that probably most people never had. You said CU. What's CU? Yeah, what is CU? Yeah, I think it's Credit Union. Uh, oh, okay. yeah. So Kevin has done a lot of work with credit unions in the past and, and, mm. um, and so, um, and then uh, he was a repossessor also in the past. So he has a, a plethora of knowledge that he can, he can share with everyone. Mm. So knowledge is coming up next. Now what we'll do is Kevin is still dialing in. I had asked you all for, so, I mean, we set this up. The purpose of this Joel, we were at Used Car Week. We talked about a hackathon of yeah. ideas. You want to take that idea and, and, and pick up where we left off when we talked at Used Car Week about that? And the context was, was the storage crisis, no? I think you're right. I think, yeah, I think it was. Yeah. Coming off when the lot mm -hmm. is full, right? Yeah. 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 That was a great show, you guys. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was it. such a pivotal point i think in in our industry and in the transport industry that that was that was a great show anybody who didn't see that one needs to go back and watch that mm. yeah so it's really interesting times you know the storage crisis we've discussed it a couple times it's obviously out there in the stratosphere um some of my partners at the state organizations here have uh have made some 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 amazing strides and some 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 laudable efforts out there that are, are definitely going to start yielding some fruit the, um, the storage crisis is something that really, if you really want to break it down, Brianna, I, I'm so happy that you mentioned the Repo Blood book because anything that shines a light on the inner workings, really shining a light on transparency and kind of opening the dialogue, um, that's really important to us at the American Recovery Association. And in, in that vein, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put in a quick plug. We have a webinar coming up about the storage crisis this Thursday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 2 Central and 12 Pacific. One of the assets that we have is is uh, a gentleman by the name of Jeremy Cross, who works for IRS uh, and, or, is, or is an owner of IRS. Um, just a fantastic business mind, understands both uh, both sides of the deal, the capital markets, the yes. lenders, the, the recovery professionals. And um, he's put together a fantastic presentation that gets into the fundamentals, the economic fundamentals, and even down to the to the um, to what's going on at the lot. He's um, the brains behind the bunch, y'all. <laughs> well, well, I, I got to keep some secrets there. Don't let too much out. But uh, no, Jeremy is an asset and, uh, and, and we're appreciative of him. Uh, it's a fantastic opportunity also for lenders. Anybody else? Um, and we w we're actually trying to cater to that audience, right? Vaughn, we want the lenders to be on that webinar as well. It's, it's education. 
It's opening the kimono. It's providing transparency and looking at things from a financial standpoint, which we're all business people. And, and, and ultimately, that's kind of how things all lay down. Um, Vaughn, I want to let you be able to chime in if you have anything you want to add. No, I think you hit it all, Joel. I, I know that storage is going to be a hot topic today. Um, so I don't want to like start it off with the storage because, you know, Ryan is here. He's really um, propelled us forward with this conversation around storage. So um, I don't want to start it off with that. Um, um, my point, I would rather Ryan start from what the Association of Illinois has done and what they're doing for this entire industry. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we uh, we kind of put together a no store, a no free storage campaign that's been um, kind of catapulted, moving in the right directions. We've uh, been speaking with a couple of lenders and orders alike to try to see if we can make some sort of leeway going forward to to bring light to the situation of what's actually going on. Um, you know, anytime that a vehicle crosses any one of our lots, we assume liability for anything. We should be compensated for that, and unfortunately, that's just not happening at this point. So, um, you know, we've been uh, striving to make communication, education, by providing the uh, lien holders and the forwarders with all the information that they need on our end uh, of what we're seeing uh, financially, that what's, what's affecting us and how it's greatly going to be affecting them as well. Yeah, and I didn't mean to discount Ryan, you guys. He's also a part of the brains behind the bunch. Um, he's done a lot of work on the analytics and calculations of, of those, um, uh, you know, service items up behind the scenes. And um, he probably doesn't get enough credit for the amount of work that he's put into that. So, um, you know, as much as we're grateful to Jeremy Cross, we're, we're grateful to Ryan as well. Hey, so wait, I'm going to... It's, I would say it's a big team effort as well. I mean, we're working with people down in Texas. We're working with people in California, people in Pennsylvania, and we're all we're all kind of bringing these numbers to come together. And as we're coming together, we're we're finding that there's a lot of commonalities that are going on around there. That's uh, that's very influential for for us, and it should be for the lien holders as well. So you're saying that you've you've got with the lenders, and you've said we're we're going to change things, right? Is that what you just said? We do it every day. <laughs> Trying to. Okay, well, and what, what you're changing the no free storage. If the lot, if the car comes on our lot, there, we we're liable now, and there needs to be compensation for that. Is that what you're saying? Oh, that, absolutely. I mean, if as soon as the vehicle crosses the lot, if there's anything that happens on our lot, well, it's on our lot. It doesn't matter if a tree falls onto a car or if uh, you know the place floods up. It's it's on our insurance. The ones that are going to be. Taking care, you know, having to take care of it. I'm sure Renee can address that one. And you're saying up until maybe the last couple of years, you guys have talked about this, but there hasn't ever really been any, any no actions been taken. Is that what you're saying? Kind of. What what we've been hearing recently is that the financial institutions understand that there is actually a need that's for this, but no one's ever brought them critical data like we brought them currently to support why exactly we need this. All right, that makes sense. I would say too, like the industry's at critical mass, right? So between COVID and all of these things, Renee, you can attest, and you guys have given the statistics before, that at least 25% of our industry disappeared during COVID and we're still losing one to three agencies a month. This is a fairly small industry to begin with. I'd say there's three to 5,000 of us. Um, in the entire country. So just think about that relative to like how many fast food restaurants and grocery stores are just in the 10 mile square area where you live, right? This is a, a fairly small industry as it is. So those service providers are drying up and it's not just due to negligence or bad business. Most of the time it is due to the high cost and the, and the, and the liability. Uh, and risk that we face. So, um, you know, it's kind of been the perfect storm through COVID because before it was kind of like, there was so many of us that it was like, this is just how it is. And this is, you know, how it's always been. So if you don't want to do it, the guy down the street will do it. Well, now there is no guy down the street. So if you don't want to sign the contract with us and you don't want to give us the terms and you don't want to be fair in your fees and, and understand our cost of doing business, then, 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 you know, now, now the lenders and clients in our space are starting to feel that pain. Mm, got it. To put that, stage, to put that one in perspective. I just want to say, so, hey, Kevin, can you see and hear us? Oh, 
Yeah. Okay. I'm okay. back. Cool. And now you've got one other video screen. I see like purple stuff. If you want to stop that, in fact, I, I'll tell you what. I, it's because he's on his phone, guys. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's, wasn't it's behaving. So when, you, when you call in on your phone, it gives you two. I want to be in stereo, Kevin. <laughs> Here's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to, I just put that in the waiting room. There we go. Okay, so you perfect. Can, yeah, you can leave it. Okay, cool. All right, now I don't want to cut you off. Please finish that thought. Sorry. Oh, no, we were just, um, we, I'm sorry, I think we were talking about the reduction and in, in recovery agencies that are on the uh, around the network that are there. I was going to say just a statistic for us here in Illinois, just five years ago, we had 144 companies that were active within the state. Today, there are only 24 companies that cover the entire state of Illinois. So it's it's drastically reducing, and the, you know, the thought that we're supposed to provide this coverage with even, even further distance now for us to drive out even further, go pick up cars further out because we've got a reduction in the amount of companies that are out there. It's making it, uh, it's making it very difficult for a lot of companies to survive. Now that, now when you say companies survive, you're, you're referring to the repo company, right? So Correct. one of the questions I'm curious, and I might be able to get some answers uh, in ADA this week, but the financial institutions, what's it going to take for them to wake up and say, oh, we have a problem? Or have they already woken up? Or are they just now maybe paying attention to what, what we're talking about? Where, where, what's your thoughts on that? I think they're now just starting to pay attention, but maybe Brianna's got a better thought on that one. They don't really have a choice at this point. And I'm not saying that, you know, that we're, we're being bullies or anything like that. We're only asking for compromise and what's fair at this point. And because there is so few of us left, this is, we are at a, we are at a point where, where everyone is sitting at the table and, and, and people aren't so much just telling us, um, this is the way it is. This is how it's always been done. And I'll hire the guy down the street. Right. So Vaughn's down the street from me, but guess what's going to happen when client a calls Vaughn and says, Hey, I'm not, uh, and Vaughn says, man, I can't touch this unless you're going to do a, B and C. And then, well, he says, I'm going to call the guy down the street and he gets me. And I say, mm -mm, cause I'm also not going to do this unless you do a, B and C. And then I call Vaughn and, and say that. And so we're communicating on a level we've never communicated before. We're, we're just like you guys have seen with your show. We are connecting with the other sectors of the industry. We're educating, you know, we're not just standing on our soapbox saying like, oh, this is what we deserve. We've done the work. We've done the analytics. We've done the calculations. You know, we have the data to back us up. And, and, and so this is a conversation that is way overdue and is now happening. And that, mm. that's, that's, a, that's a really good point, Brianna, that the data is there. And that, that always leads the way. It's just like facts, right? Um, yeah, data doesn't lie. Yeah, you can, you, can, you can slice and dice it how you want, but we're going to go ahead and do that heavy lift. And, and I commend all the state organizations for flexing that muscle because I don't know that that's normally you know, what we're able to do, but maybe it's just a sign of the times, right? Like we have a lot more access to data. We have a lot more people that are capable of pulling it together. And, and um, I think it's, it's a fantastic situation. Even just in general, everyone now in this industry is so much different than the perception of us or that it even was mm -hmm. 10 or 20 years ago. We are business professionals who are running our repo companies like a business. We are not, this is not the wild, wild west. We're not out there jacking open garages or gates or cutting locks or doing any of that stuff. We are the ones who are sitting in our offices, you know, uh, being, well, we're being leaders out in the field with our team. And then we're also sitting in our office doing the analytics, doing the numbers, you know, to back up, um, uh, you know, our performance and, and we're now sending our own client scorecards. We're not just accepting client scorecards for what they are. We have come leaps and bounds from, from where we were. And, and I think that's part of the important part about us connecting with you guys and, and these other sectors of the industry is we need to shed this stigma and this yucky reputation that we've had for so long because everybody mm -hmm sitting on this call are probably some of the most wonderful people I know. If you met me at, you know, out at an event or a gala or something, like, do you look at me and think like, oh yeah, she's like some scumbag repossessor? Probably not. Or at least I hope so. <laughs> and we're not, I mean, we're just not anymore. You know, I, I want to just chime in on that, Brianna. You know, years ago, whenever recovery agents that were competitors spoke to each other, clients seemed to take that as collusion. 
Yeah. And now we're looking at this as collaboration. We have yes. got to get to a place that we're all communicating together, not for the benefit sometimes of our own company, but it's for the benefit of the industry. And I think mm -hmm. just while we're collaborating with you, Jay and, and Ty, it's because we have to learn what pain points you guys have, what our pain points are, and then try to educate the clients on why a need for change is. And it cannot be a request. It has to be a demand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I got to say that me and Vaughn have joked before on, on other shows, like we didn't like each other, but there was no reason for us. We didn't even know why we didn't like each other. We were just programmed to not like each other. And it turns out Vaughn's one of my favorite people in the whole world. I tease him all the time. I'm like, why you got to be my competitor? I just love you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's the other thing. We're not only colluding against the clients, Vaughn and I and, and, and some of our other local competitors will work together. Hey, how can, you know, we have some really great clients. So we will get together and say, how, hey, how can we better serve this client? How can we, you know, bring those days to repo, <clears throat> that cost to repo? How can we work together? Like I'll have a, you know, I, I won't be as strong in one county and Vaughn will be super strong. So we'll get with that client and say, hey, can you assign more accounts to Vaughn in this county and more accounts to me in this county? Because, you know, we're going to be able to strengthen our partnership with you that way and service you better. So it's, it, it really isn't collusion. Like Vaughn said, it is collaboration. No, and it's necessary too, because of the attrition that we had of all the licensed repossessors since the pandemic. It's necessary. If you're looking for a network to serve you, you have to have that network work with itself, right? You have to have communication. It has to be a, a living organism. And so there's a lot of sophistication that comes along with that. And Brianna and, uh, and, and, and the folks working on the state level, it's so essential. Everything is local. And then it grows from there in my mind. And, and I think it's so um, awesome to have. I, I've never seen this level of collaboration. Right. On the lending side, for sure. No. Uh, on this side. Yes. And I think it, it, it's for a very, very positive end as well. I can well so, yeah, go ahead, Kevin. Yeah. Uh, again, the issue of storage has just been a, a constant erosion of fees. This has been going on for decades. Again, I go way, way back, just like Vaughn. We started about the same time way years ago. In those days, storage was a given. Transport was a given, keys were a given. There was a lot of things that you got from it. But one thing remained the constant, is the same as it is right now. About the average repo fee for the repossession itself is about $325 to $350. The difference is $325 isn't worth the same now as it was then. And everybody's trying to survive on that. And that's creating thinner margins. And the storage issue, when you took that out of there, that was one of the ancillary products to the repossession. The repossession was a vehicle for other fee incomes and all the rest of that was taken away. So you take away all of that and then you also include the, you know, the, uh, the increase of expenses and then you have the devaluation of the dollar through the consumer price index and you have this profit margin that's been shrinking and shrinking and shrinking and shrinking and it's been crushing people to the point that when we hit the pandemic, nobody had any financial reserves and there's not, no gas left in the tank. And the fact that people are pushing back shouldn't be a surprise. It's about survival. But here's the sad thing. Lenders, especially larger lenders, probably won't budge much at all until they cannot get the service that they want for the price they want. Only when they can't get it will they do, pay more. It's just the nature of the beast. Again, it's in scale. If you're going to do 5,000, 10,000 repossessions a month, and you're going to pay $10 more, you're paying exponentially more every year. And so if they can keep that $10 out of it, that 20, the 30, whatever, they make a larger amount of profit. And all these decisions are made in the back rooms of bean counters and accounts. Okay. And it's just, it's fed downhill. But the problem is everybody in the industry is just kind of taking it. They've taken on the chin and going, well, if I don't do it, somebody else will. Well, they got to quit thinking like that. And again, the cooperation, not collusion, the cooperation that's going on between agency owners and the states, it's necessary. It's life or death. Hey, okay, so Jay had an interesting question on LinkedIn. Okay. What what's the what was it, Jay? What's the role? Be, how does how does repo have touched the dealer, the lender, the consigner, the remarketer, the transport guy? What was the question, Jay? 
And I just want to say, um, man, there's a lot of there's a lot of conversation going on in the live chat, um, and it is really exciting. Um, also, as we move into NADA, got some questions and emails, so this is really really cool. Repeat your question for me because I've been I've been trying to manage business and repeat it again. No, not a problem. This is the question you posted on LinkedIn on your post. Your oh yeah, post. okay. So on LinkedIn, I <clears throat> asked the question. I'm going somewhere with this? So, yeah. yeah. What is so? Yeah. All right. So what I said was, and I always try to pose some kind of question of the show. What do dealers, auctions, lenders, consigners, auto remarketers, and transporters need to know about the auto repossession industry today? Mm. So as I was thinking about this question, I was like, okay, really, I don't think people understand exactly how repo touches everything, right? I, I just don't think we fully understand that. <coughs> I'm going to raise my hand in that as well. So somebody take the floor, walk us through, how do we, how do we get to you? For How did we get to you? And then what do we do when you've got the car then next? Does that make any sense at all? That's a Darcy question for sure. Darcy, where's Darcy at anyway? She does all the things. She's amazing. There she is. You do all the things. <laughs> you do all the things. You and Todd are amazing. Okay, so sorry, I was looking in the chat. What was the question? <laughs> I know what? there's a lot going on. It's amazing. So I want to. I just want to thank everybody for being a part of this repo bunch experience. All right, repeat the question, please. Well, we we all operate. We tend to get focused on what we do. And, the, and as you as you take a look at this, I, I know I can talk about transportation. Transportation, I can touch every vertical, the dealer, the auction, the repo guy, and I can tell you how I touch it and why I touch it. So from the, the repo side, explain to our audience, or the people that are watching, how does repo touch the auction, the dealer, the transport guy, the finance guy, the lender, the remarketer? How does, how does this work for you guys? Well, for our company, um, we do things, you know, we're one of the ones that do a lot of transport. So for us, we touch um, it from start to finish. So, you know, your the lender finds you, the order comes in, um, you, you complete the service, you offer a key, you uh, then you offer the transport and you get it off your lot. And you have a, what we talked about, like, I think it was last week was, um, it was chain of custody, point A to point B. So our, our company offers you a one-stop shop. You're going to get us touching it from point A to point B, and you're not going to have to worry about because if there's a problem, it's, prob it's going to be us or it's going to be the auction. You're not going to have to worry about how getting a transporter here, does the transporter have the right insurance? Um, you know, the, do they have the right equipment? to pick and haul that vehicle because why do I have to have a $300 test to be able to touch that vehicle? And so do all my employees, but a transporter can come in and touch that same vehicle and have all the same information and they don't have to have that test or they don't have to have the right equipment or they don't have to have the right insurance. And no, this is not against any transporters. It's mm -hmm. just that the repo industry, we are held to such a standard by the clients um, between our policies and procedures, our operating manuals, our due diligence, our financials. They want everything from us. They wanna see our trucks, they wanna see our lots, they wanna see our storage. How do you handle this? How do you handle that? And you know, there's a lot of liability on our part and we have to do so much to prove that they should give their work to us. So, you know, everybody in that whole chain from start to finish should have to abide by the same rules and unfortunately that's not how it works mm. sorry went a little bit of a tangent there <laughs> no but it so it starts with somebody wants a car right yeah okay my name's ty i want a car so okay do you have cash for the car uh no do you have a job yeah okay we can finance the car right am i going the right direction is this yep. kind of how it get the ball gets rolling Okay, so I, I decide, yeah, you can have this car if you if you put this much down and you can make these many payments for this much amount for the next three years or however long you finance car for. So things are going along fine. The finance company's happy. They're making great interest rates off me. I make my payments. Something happens. COVID comes along. I lose my job, whatever. Something happens in life. Now I can't make my payments. So here we start talking about 
voluntary repossession or non-voluntary. Is that right? So this is kind of the idea, like, because I think, I think, see, the people that we had, Jay, I don't remember who was on our show, but we had some finance people, some lenders, consigners a couple weeks ago. Well, the money people. Well, we remember had some that? of the consigner gang. Yeah. On, uh, I don't remember which show it was. We had consigners, what was it November or December? Let me, I'll find remember. the link. Yeah, it doesn't matter. What my yeah. point is, is like who, they somehow never seem to show up on the show. The first time we had them, I was just amazed and shocked because they're the kind, I, and I don't know why or who or what the deal is, but it, it, to me, it seems like it all starts with somebody who's got a lot of money, who's lending money out. And that's that's kind of where the, the it gets going. Am I right or wrong? Okay, sure? but but I'll say this is that okay. Courting the consigner is that show we had consigners oh, yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think they would say yeah, but we're not necessarily the gatekeepers, like a lending institution, a bank, or you know, the holder of the note that actually benefits right, off of. Guess what I'm saying is the the. The, some of the challenges that I think I hear, I'm not in. I'm not a repo. I've never been a repo. I think person. Brianna has an answer. Brianna, oh, okay. come Brianna's on. Brianna's coming. Brianna, who's the making? I'm I know. Attention. I know. Everybody, <laughs> there's a lot happening. So here's the question, Brianna: Who's making the money? You know, Kevin and I. Who makes the money? About, who's screwing? Listen, who, who makes huh? money in this in this world? CPAs who's making and the attorneys. money off That's this who deal. makes money. Who is it? CPAs and attorneys, right, yeah. you guys? That's who makes oh, money. Okay. But but in a repo. All right, because it isn't the transporter. It's not the agent. Who's making? Who's getting rich off the repo? Who is it? You know what? I think that Anybody? everyone is infighting so much about it. Like the banks. Look, <laughs> we don't want to demonize our lenders here, right? They're about their bottom we line. We don't, That's but we want to educate and be real. That's, That's their right. job, right? Um, but listen, there are lenders out there who get it. And they realize that repos are not going to go away and that and that having a network full of really great agents is better than having the government step in and take away self-help repos. <clears throat> it's not going to help anybody, especially the consumers. So um, that's the problem is I don't think anybody is really getting rich off of repos. Um, everyone is infighting for their fair share. I think, I think somebody is getting rich. I, I know who's not. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> what, what I'd say to that is it's time for us. I think unification is, is crucial here. And since COVID, this this industry has seemed to wrap ourselves around each other more so than ever. And Kevin and I are probably the oldest in this in this industry on this call. But it wasn't like that before. We all had our, stayed in our own little corners and we operated our own business and made money. Now things have changed. And we have got to stop being concerned so much about our, what our clients want and desire and more so what it takes for us to run a profitable business. And a lot of times what happens is we try to take things like these ancillary fees like storage, for example, and we give out complimentary days of storage to our clients as if they're waiters and we're supposed to give them a tip. You know, <laughs> I think it's time for us to change our change the narrative. We have got to get to a place where we say, hey, this is, our, this is our business. This is what it costs for us to run our business. And it's either you accept it or we understand. And if they go up the street to somebody else who wants to get that business for whatever dollar they charge, that's their prerogative. I believe that we're in a place right now with 25 to 40 percent of agents leaving this space where something's going to change. And I believe this year the wind is clearly behind our backs. But we can get real busy here in the next couple of months and forget about the fight. And we'll be right back to where we were pre-COVID. We've got to remember that we're in this, we're in a fight. And unless we stand up for what we believe is right for our own individual business and collaborate around each other to make sure the associations, state and national, are moving us in the right direction for us to be successful. It's not about whether the banks are making money, it's are you making money? And if you're mm -hmm. not, you need to consider whether or not you need to stay in the business. That's a great point, Vaughn. And you're right. Yeah. You absolutely are right. And I would say some of the people that probably are making the most money off the repo industry are people who don't do repos. Oh, I'm just going to leave it at that. Okay, great. There's a great Mike, man, Mike in the live chat has it. For everyone here, it is a volume game in order to be profitable with repos. The only ones getting rich are the dealers who sell the vehicles too high 
yep. and then buy them again for a discount at an auction. That's a really, really good amount. And they get a point from the uh, lenders for selling the loan. Right, there you go. Ding. Mm -hmm. Oh, I kind of got to disagree. That's what's called the golden goose. Yes, yeah, but I kind of got it. Debate I kind of, other than like the record used car, um, you know, uh, sales and prices during the last, you know, chip shortage and COVID and everything like that, um, it is a lender's objective to actually keep um, borrowers in their cars. They make more money if they do that than than usually taking a loss at auction. So um, I, I have to kind of disagree there. Maybe some clients who are local mm -hmm. that 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 take their their vehicles back and, and remarket them themselves, um, like Bridgecrest Drive Time, for example, right? So they don't usually send their cars to auction. A lot of their cars um, get taken back to those dealerships and they remarket them themselves. Um, but lenders want to keep buyers in their cars. They do. Well, again, there's a differentiation between buy here, pay here dealers and mm -hmm. franchise dealers. And I yes. can articulate enough in that because, again, the franchise dealers, their hands are clean. They're done with it. And you bring up a perfect point here about the lenders want to keep the borrower in the car. Repossessing a car, and this is one of the things that drives me nuts. And you see these articles talking about how lenders want to repossess cars. They don't. It's a losing proposition. It's full of markup. It's full of back end. It's full of a lot of labor to repossess it, get it liquidated, file for refunds, send out the notifications. And the notifications, notice of intent to dispose of motor vehicle required by the Uniform Commercial Codes of the Reese Levering Act in the state of California. These things require that there's a waiting period before they can liquidate it. Now, the reason they don't send it to transfer to the auction right away is because they can get free storage from the repossessor. Whereas the auction won't give them that, okay? And so that's one reason. The other reason, it's usually more convenient for the borrower to come reinstate it from your local lot than to drive an hour away, an hour and a half away to the auto auction. So they have all the motivation in the world to keep it on that lot. And again, not getting any storage is paramount to that. And well, so and we're more insured too, right? Oh, so that car is safer. It's more insured yeah. on our lot, right, Renee? On on you got on the repossessor's lot is covered for whatever happens. On you know the what? Auction's lot is yep. got to be something they were legally liable for. Hail damage, flood is not going to be covered. So the longer yeah, it sits there, the safer it is. You guys should have done a trivia question for the people who aren't in repo, asking them what their average. Um, liability po policy covers, right? <laughs> so I'm betting it's probably oh. somewhere between 100,000 and 300,000. Everybody on this call is insured for about a million to 3 million. So it's going to depend if they've got, if they have any federal authority, then they're going to have to have a million or 750, most of them. But, but somebody that doesn't have any filings, probably 350 to 500 for their auto liability. And Lenders sometimes think they're safe, our clients, not worrying about that liability limit, but lenders sometimes do get pulled into an auto liability claim. And so if uh, whoever they hired only has a 500,000 limit and it goes to jury, they're going to go after that lender. Well, and let's talk about that, Renee. What is my my Texas site agreement for the transporters that do come onto our lot in our staging area? I couldn't. I um, the the general site agreement that we've all shared, you know, through the industry. I think that that was at five hundred thousand, but Texas actually only lets me ask for three hundred thousand from transporters. I have cars in my warehouse that are more than three hundred thousand mm. dollars. But so, but we're the the, the liability is. The liability limit is going to pay for if someone hit, like auto transporter hits another car, hurts somebody and does damage to that, to their, to them, but their cargo or and your own hook, that's going to pay for the damage done to the vehicle that is either on hook or on, or on the back of an auto hauler. What's the average that somebody has uh, an on hook or cargo? So most of the contracts require, uh, for you guys, a hundred thousand minimum to three fifty to five hundred thousand. 
once upon a time, the lenders were all crazy. I've even seen a um, million dollars on hook limit. I mean, that that's finally went away. But years ago, there was a couple of lenders that thought they needed that because they didn't understand what they were asking for. Anyway, so isn't that fun for us? Yeah, well, I was going to, and I see Brandon <laughs> Jay's talking about, I think we're, we're thinking some similar things. Okay, the big short. I don't have really? any transporters that come onto my lot that have a million dollar policy. I require them to send me a COI from their carrier and um, that highlights those policies. And I, um, I don't have any transporters that come on my lot with a million dollar policy. I'm sure Darcy probably has one. Really? But um, no, transporters that pick up for our clients, I've never seen anybody with a million dollar policy, just to answer Brandon's comment. But they must not have any federal authority then. Well, yeah. Oh, so it's more like local operators. I don't know. Um, the housing market. Just as we look at, you know, how many people shouldn't have ever gotten into that house and gotten into that loan? How many repossessions are like that? What's the? Does anybody think about what's the what's the percentage mm. of cars that are getting repoed? Where you know, man, you never really should have had that. <laughs> wow. Kevin, didn't you put a screenshot of a bad loan in your book that was just like super? Was it, who was it? You or or Branch? But somebody put that out there, like a like a twenty five thousand dollar car that after finance was literally like ninety thousand. There was a um, company out of Illinois that was. Midwest, Midwest title loan back when we first started repoing, um, they would send their contracts over and it was 320% interest on that title loan, 320%. And the car was maybe worth two grand. So, mm. you know, those people were never going to be able to pay that money back. Mm. Well, there's not a state limitation at 36%. So even at 36%, that's you're paying a third of whatever your loan is on top yeah. of that for your car. I'm not trying to to just stir the mud, but in this case, some but I am. But in this case, somebody made money that. Well, well, did okay, they? So now we know who makes the money. That's what I'm getting at. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's a quote. Yeah, Kevin. Corporate recently got hit from the CFPB and they got fined or a lawsuit between them and one of the state AGs, and they had and I think what Brianna was talking about was a headline I showed from one of their contracts. I mean, the interest rate was through the roof, and I think they were paying like it's like a twenty thousand dollar car, and they're paying like twelve thousand dollars of interest or something, something crazy like that. But it, they had been doing this for years. This has been their business model since the nineteen seventies. The guy started off as a used car dealer, and they have built into their pricing and model a loss expectation of like thirty percent. They expect that they're going to repossess and lose thirty percent. So for them to do that, they have to balance it out with higher with higher a yield mm. so they have these massive rates high losses and they stick people into cars they know they can't afford you know i mean that's one side of the coin in the standard lending world the issue that you see a lot is the straw deal okay grandpa or dad's got a perfect 800 fico 850 fico and junior's got the you know the 590 and he's going to have to go down the road to a subprime lender and dad's going well you know i know he'll make the payment well, Junior's had a job for six months, and he had the car for three months after Dad signed for it and tells the boss to go hike, take a hike or whatever, and uh, he quits making payments. You know, lo and behold, he can't afford to keep it. He gets repossessed. Dad's on the hook for it. But regardless, you get a lot of those straw deals. Most lenders in the standard lending realm keep a reasonable debt-to-income ratio, payment-to-income ratios based upon income. And if your FICO score and your credit rating is in the mid to low area, they're going to look for proof of income. I'm not saying that can't be fudged. You can find that online all over the place. But most lenders keep that upright. Regardless, going back to what I said about the subprime lenders, um, you know, they build that into the pricing. It's, you know, it's the way the game is played. Mm. I have a question. What what do you guys see in we keep we've Jay and I've been hearing for a for sure a solid year that there's this big wave of repos coming. Has anybody seen the big wave yet? Something's gonna build up in time. 
And again, you're going to see it in early stage delinquency. I think an interesting article I just read this morning, I was going to do some writing on, was Ally Financial's uh, investor meeting, where they recently uh, released their uh, fourth quarter charge off losses. They came in about, I think, it was 60 basis points above projection. Now, fourth quarter, December through uh, October, is always the highest delinquency of the year. So it was expected to be high. And, you know, you can usually get a pretty good idea where that's going, but it came up much higher than expected. One of the big drivers, though, coming up ahead here is going to be LTV. And they anticipated 30% loss on collateral value by mid-year. <laughs> they think that the car values are going to plummet. And they're right. Okay, oh, It yeah. can't help. Because, again, we have high interest rates, which is drove, what's going to drive up the payment to income ratios. It's going to drive down the sale amounts. And therefore, the resale values are going to go down. And so you're going to have this conundrum where somebody's car, they can't afford anymore. They want to go trade it in. Well, they can't do that anymore. They're underwater. Okay, you bought that thing for thirty-five thousand. Now it's worth twenty-five thousand. You're underwater ten grand. Okay, mm -hmm. how many of these people are going to come up to ten grand to you know make up the delta on that? And even if they do, they're still going to be in that 120, 130 percent LTV ratio on the sales amount for the vehicle that they're trying to buy. So mm -hmm. it's it's a quandary. A lot of people are going to find themselves. In. It's coming. It's just it's going to be slow building. And I think you know Federal Reserve reports, credit union reporting data, which comes out late. Uh, and uh, as well as, you know, uh, publicly traded lenders have their um, annual reports that get broadcasted. You can see some of the delinquency rising on that. The press is a horrible barometer for what's going mm. on there. Yeah. You have to ignore them. They love to sensationalize everything. You got to yeah. look at the data. Look at yeah, the if, data. You listen to a lot of the, if you listen to a lot of the earning calls that are going on with the financial that are publicly traded and listen to hear all the same data that it's exactly what we kept talking about right now, that it is, it is a slow building trend that's coming up. But as long as you're listening to the calls, you can hear the losses that they're starting to take in right now that's building up to, to what we're kind of projecting here. Now, I heard Kevin just say Allied. Did you say <laughs> Allied Financial, Kevin? Allied. Ally. Ally, A-L-L-Y. Uh, and they're the ones that just bought four billion dollars worth of loans from. That was Al lied. Uh, no. I don't know. That no, that's so. Kevin, no. what's up, Kevin? I'm going to put it to Kevin. Al I'm pretty sure it was Al Ally who bought Carvana. The I E D. No, A L L Y. Mm -hmm. That's what you read in your in your well, news. I'm going to go find Look the article. It. All right, let's yeah, find you read this. it. Well, I know I read it, but. Uh... Okay, so what? While you're looking that up, I'm going to keep it so. Yeah. As far as boots on the ground, you, you guys aren't feeling like, oh, my, so overwhelmed, I can't take it right now. Not yet. Maybe not on the repossession side, but on storing the vehicles. We're at that okay. point. No longer. Yeah, the post repo get, right. is honestly where it gets a little hairy. Yeah. You have to get these clients yeah. motivated to move these cars. <laughs> right now, they have no motivation. Look at that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Too, See, I, I thought focused. it was Allied, yeah. A L L I D. Yeah, Ally, Ally. But yeah. that's Allied. They just bought four million, four billion dollars worth of loans. And Kevin just said something about the reporting. So that so I like the way Kevin's talking. It's really cool. Uh the next thing that is interesting, and Kevin hit on this too, but so we follow a lot of the car guys. I noticed Mike Buchanan's in the live chat, and I'm thinking, okay, there, we all saw, if you're paying attention, we all saw, what was that, late 2021, the used car did what it's never done before. It appreciated in value. And then uh, dealers were going everywhere. There was this big push, buy them in the lanes, buy them out of the driveways, whatever you can do to buy a car, do that. Doesn't matter if it's in the alley or the back or which, go buy cars. And so everybody's buying cars, buying cars. Prices start coming down. Interest rates are going up. That I think we hit a new all-time high for the average used car payment, right? It's somewhere close to $1,000. And that's stretching that thing out like 72 months. I mean, ridiculous. So uh, the car, So and I know this is what you're saying. You guys are using a lot better words. So clean it up after I make this mess. Now the price of the used car is declining, the demand for the used car is declining, and everybody's underwater that bought a car when the prices was too high. Is that is that where we're at? It's correct. Okay, so what are we gonna do? <laughs> what are we gonna do now, Kevin? 
Well, everyone's here. Here's the thing is that, and again, we've talked about this earlier. We touched on how 25 to 40% of the repo industry went away. So what happens when it all comes crashing? There aren't going to be enough adjusters, not enough tow trucks. And I was writing another editorial for my other C collector website about where are all these collectors going to come from? We haven't seen a recession in over 13 years. It takes time to build a collector. And a lot of those collectors that were collectors back then who had that experience, they've retired. They moved on. So automation is only going to do so much. And besides that, it's not a matter of just, hey, I got him on the phone. He's going to give me a payment. It doesn't work that way. They've got mm -hmm. the money or they don't. And again, we're starting to see the layoffs build up out here in Silicon Valley. I was just Microsoft 10 grand. I was going to. Yeah. 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 That's just Microsoft. Yeah. And What's again, it like to lay off 10,000 people in one, right? I don't know. I've never done that many. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Kevin. Yeah, Kevin. Tell us, more. Tell us what, what it's like. What Zoom is for, right? And, you know, I don't, not me. But, uh, yeah, I mean, again, these people, most of them are going to get some severance packages. Okay? There'll be some unemployment for them. A lot of them will land back on their feet. So some of these people will be fine. But, again, some people got fat and happy. It's kind of like when we watched the housing crisis. If you ever watched a realtor, who was really active before they uh, before the great meltdown of the Great Recession? They were making bank. They were making bank. It was wonderful, until it wasn't. You know, mm -hmm. they didn't save enough money, and you know they come crying to their lenders looking for modifications and whatsoever. And it might look a little like that. I mean, I think again, I think a lot of the tech people will land in other places eventually, but it really depends what the skill set is. It really depends. well, and and I just read now there's talk about unionizing within the tech world maybe because of microsoft 10k and i there was actually i didn't share it i didn't know what to do with it but ty you saw there was an article of a guy that had worked for carvana and then you oh, know yeah. he's, and he's looking yeah. for a job to yeah. replace the one he's losing and yeah. i'm saying that i don't think there is one because the, work. that yeah. job Probably yeah, Joe Bacari in the Joe Bacari yeah. in the live chat. Joe, how often do you post for somebody to come and train your car haulers? I, I mean, I didn't know that job existed until Carvana made it. Maybe Not to car mention, I don't know how much experience. Where's that guy going to even get that teaching car hauler? <laughs> I mean, there's. I, it, it's weird the way the world works. It's really strange. It is weird. So watching the watching the used car guys that's the guys i try to hang out with spend a lot of time with you know i drive by i look at their inventory I, I try to talk to them whenever i see them what's going on in your world uh do you need cars can you find car no just leave me alone go away I, i'm just doing the best i can to survive right now so i i think it is going to be interesting that's why kevin and his numbers is really really awesome because that's what i'm hearing that's what i'm seeing in real life what Kevin said, it it's we're getting ready. There's something's. It's like, how's this thing gonna stop, right? Whoa, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. All <laughs> right, I am gonna call mm -hmm. on somebody in class that's trying to stay quiet. Mm -hmm. I see Renee over there with something going on. Renee, what do you want to say? What do you want to jump in with? Do you have something? Well, I saw a couple in the live chat. I sent my. I'd like to talk about. We talked about it. When Darcy and I were on the show, somebody asked Bree, you know, something about uh, asking her auto haulers for certificates of insurance. And I had an insured contact me today and say, hey, the auto haulers are giving me a hard time about this. And it's like, I know that years ago people didn't ask for that. But the most dangerous phrase in the English, English language is we've always done it that way. Repossessors need to protect themselves the insurance companies want to manage their risk by knowing that those auto haulers that are coming on their lots have certificates so auto haulers you know if you've got questions call me and, I, and we can go into conversation about it but when when the repossessor asks for it it's really a good thing hmm. Yes, and I, I tried to make a comment. I don't think it posted because it was too long or whatever, but um, yes, you, every transporter that comes into our yard, they have to sign a site entry agreement and they have to provide a COI and I don't accept that COI as a printout from them. I want it from their carrier and I want myself listed as a secondary insured, the same thing that I provide to our clients that we service and that protects our staff, our facility and the collateral that is on our lot. 
Bryn J was saying that we onboard all of our drivers two week process to haul cars, which is interesting too because this gets it back into having a. It was in an article earlier having a heavily vetted carrier base. <clears throat> yeah, I got a question. I don't know how we're doing on time, but is we're doing one amazing of the things on time. One of the things that I wanted to uh, <laughs> ask is like. What can what can ATI do for you? you what can what can nice. we do to, to help you more? Thank you, Todd. Yeah, I look at Vaughn. I look at Vaughn. I think about Vaughn. Edu educate. Keep educating. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, okay. let's let Vaughn take this one away because this is yeah. something that we talked about that we haven't even gotten a chance to touch on, and this is super important to me to get out on this show. Is the fact that some major lenders are assigning voluntary repossessions to transporters through the auctions and load boards? And let's let's just let mm. Vaughn and Joel and Renee take that one away because um, mm. I'm trying to rem be my you know the nicest lady that everyone knows. Well, I, I, don't, I don't want to spin this, <laughs> this to Renee, but agree to your point. I think it's all about education. You got transporters out there picking up these voluntaries at whatever rate they're doing it. And they don't understand it, that a voluntary is still a repossession, which yeah. requires a specific type of insurance. Uh, and Renee, I'm gonna pass it over to you to break that out and what, can, what, the, what the cause and effect of picking up a voluntary um, without proper insurance can, how it I, I agree with Vaughn, I just wanna say we're not trying to demonize Did the I that are accepting these orders, but we want you to understand why you shouldn't and how damaging that can be to you. So, and what I guess uh, I'm a, can I also I'm add in one to... thing? Right. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> I was just I was just going to I was just going to mention one thing here. Not all volunteers are voluntary. No. Nope. Yeah. There's a set of risks that's involved with it. Hey Ryan, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Renee, but Ryan, it just it's a whole another can of worms opens up. You get drivers. Yeah. Okay, let Renee finish, and then we'll tell you all why voluntary. And then we'll go to the double asterisk, oh, sure. Renee. <laughs> okay, drivers, so you know, voluntary. That's a whole other show. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Wow. And and I'm going to kind of jump into the voluntary. Don't, aren't always a voluntary, but okay. When the repossessor they sign a contract with their clients, and in that contract it says they will carry wrongful repossession insurance. So if the auto haulers or towers are picking up cars for the clients, I'm assuming they're signing a contract. They're not going to have wrong repossession insurance because there's only a very small handful of insurance companies that write wrong for repossession insurance and it's only for repossessors. As you know, being on the insurance carrier side, I'm you know, not going to write a policy for an auto hauler to give them wrong repossession because coverage, because there's so much that comes into play in knowing what you're doing, so you don't get involved in a wrong repossession claim. And and if an auto hauler is is doing repossession, and your insurance company finds out you're doing repossessions, you are probably going to lose your policy come renewal because insurance companies want to ensure the exposures that they have underwritten the account for. And there would be no, if that, that voluntary repo turns bad and a wrongful repo claim happens, that the insurance company's not gonna pay for it. So it's gonna come out of the auto hauler's pocket or the lender is gonna have to eat it. So you gotta have the right coverage, how, which only how's comes How's the hauler gonna possession. know? How would the hauler even know? How would the hauler know what? That it's an involuntary repossession and he's on the hook. So it could be a voluntary, but what happens two years later, that debtor trips and says, well, I felt forced into um, giving up my car. And so I really didn't want to. And so this Mr. Attorney says, okay, let me help you. All of a sudden that voluntary is now a um, wrongful repo and it was an involuntary and somebody's going to be writing a check to pay that attorney and that debtor. Okay, but you guys are saying that somehow the finance company is getting a hold of a transport company to pick up a voluntary repo. Okay, how? 
I know we're t- talking a lot and tie you slow. Can you pick up the pace? But I'm like, I'm right how there does that slow, happen? Boy. Yeah, like what? <laughs> Well, look, this is new, you guys. I'm sure you've heard of Ajero um, trying to send out repos, just regular repos through their system, right? I, I ha- I'm in a couple of towing groups in on Facebook, and I and I have se- I will say that the education is spreading because I will see these guys take a screenshot of this or whatever, which I obviously wouldn't recommend, but, and then saying like, what, this is crazy. Like they're trying to assign me a repo. Like I don't even have the proper insurance. Great. Yay. Bravo to everyone doing that. But everyone who's accepting these from a Jero or from the auctions, um, listen, a voluntary repo at the end of the day is a repo. Okay. Like there isn't a difference. Is it a voluntary Mm -hmm. repo when they remove all the lug nuts from the car? No, (laughs) it's not. Okay. But I will get sent out for a lesser fee to pick up a voluntary repo. That's not truly a voluntary So if you don't know what you're getting into and you maybe dabble in repos, what I like to call play repo, or you have an 80-20 policy where 20% of your revenue shouldn't be derived from repossessions, you have no business accepting any type of repossession order from anywhere. Um, And you should probably just stick to what you're good at and let us do our jobs. And I don't mean to say that condescendingly or rude, but at the end of the day, the more you accept, the more you increase your risk and liability. And eventually you're going to find yourself in a very expensive lawsuit. And without any insurance the next year. That's right. And you're going to be uninsurable. To be clear, it's not the transporter's fault. No, it's not. That's the the thing. The transporter doesn't even know. Yeah. Everybody's out to make a dollar. They're going to do whatever the the client, the lender allows. It's the lender. Lender. so, so we we educated we educated our local towing network through the professional towing recovery operators of Illinois, so PTROI. So we've educated them with like, the people within their network to sit there and push out an email and say, "Hey, these are red flags for you guys. When you see like you need to go pick this car from someone's house and go drop it off at the auction, it then becomes a red flag for these guys where they start to question what is going on. And then once they start to question who is this car, where is it coming from, where is it going there, and why." Opposed to just like an A to B tow, they then say, "Okay, wait a minute. This seems like it might be a repossession. Let me refer you to a re- repossession agency." But look, at the end of the day, but, there's only wow. 15 licensed states in the country. So, all of these other states, it's the wild, wild west. Many mm. states don't have the oversight and 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 just guidance that that you guys have up there in illinois and so you know um sure yeah if i'm a transporter and i'm just picking up loads and i and i'm under the impression that this is another load and maybe i'm going to get paid a little extra for it hell yeah totally want to do it right we all love cash money but please pay attention to this situation and and, and like like you all said we're not trying to demonize the transporters that are accepting so- we're trying to questions. educate you on why you shouldn't. Well, here it is, Brianna. So then, are, is there a list of questions a transporter could have to make to you know get the? Here's one repo? question: yeah. Is this a repossession or is it a transport? Period. One question. Okay. So if it's Define a transport, this. even if it's a repossessed mm-hmm. car, it's in the transport phase. Well, right. So right? so so once we've repossessed a car and that 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 right to cure period has expired. Mm-hmm. Then yes, that and 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 a transporter is scheduled to okay. pick that up. So there we that go. Transport. Uh, but if you're picking this, up, yeah, if you're picking up a repo from a consumer's house, no, or, well, or no, I, business. I actually don't know of that situation, but I do know. I mean, you know, so before I book this load, has the right to cure expired? Mm-hmm. And is well, and if you're picking it up from a lot that has. 20 cars, 100 cars, whatever, you know that like you you should be picking up that car. But if you're picking up that car from somebody's house or their work, See, or I don't know. If, store, no, I don't. Like, I don't. I've never heard shady. of that. I've never been a dispatcher, booked a load or picking up a repo. So this is something that's house. fairly new. OK, this it is, is something that's fairly okay. new. And 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 it's not like we're making a killing out there on voluntary repos. But, oh, but this some be a lenders, repo. yeah, but some lenders are assigning their voluntary repos to the auction because they're under the impression that these are safe and easy and whatnot. So they are assigning these as t- 
tows or transports when truly there they're a voluntary go. repo. And there it, you go. And it is that's okay. this that's the loophole. And they are misleading you. And uh, you know, even if you normally get paid sixty five dollars for your loads and they give you eighty five, I promise you that extra twenty dollars isn't worth the risk. But see, this is where it gets dirty because I'm the auction guy, right? I love auctions, physical auctions, and I understand how auctions work. They have a subcontractor, a lot of them, that does a lot of their local towing, right? A lot. Mm -hmm. Hey, just go get this. It's over here. That guy doesn't know nothing. He just goes, picks it up, brings it back. I mean, think about it. Let's break it down to the guy, the driver. Okay, who, who in the audience has equipment, drivers, and has drivers? Raise your hand. Right. Everybody in here has a driver, maybe one. OK, does that guy I mean, who when you when you're at an auction and you're the transport department who's taken orders from the remarketing team, the con the people with the contracts, it gets to the transportation department, transportation. Here's five cars. Hurry up and go get them. That goes to the subcontractor that they've done business with for the last 35 years. That guy, he's not asking questions. He's just going to get in the car and pay me. So the education back to Vaughn and Joel. I'm just curious. Is Joel still here? Yeah. Joel, where? What are you? What are your thoughts? Where have you been? I'm, I'm here. I'm here. I'm just following <laughs> along. Look, a lot of this is a lot of the boots on the ground talk, and uh, I, I do want to yield to folks like Vaughn and Priyana to, uh, yeah. to really kind of chime in at that level. I mean, at the overall economic level, I can kind of dive in. You guys were talking about some of the the financial services type stuff when a loan gets originated and yeah, I see it all the time. I used to trade a bunch of bulk uh, paper. Some of that stuff was kind of busted up. Um, it's amazing what can get papered up nowadays. It's really just down to the companies if they want to paper it up. My hope is that um, I've been through a number of business cycles in my career. My hope is that lenders are really taking to heart uh, the one that Kevin brought up, which is extended terms. I think maybe it was you bringing it up with 72 months, 84 months, the rest of it. There is a correlation mm -hmm. between risk of loss and a longer term. Um, and you know, especially if you have down payments, kind of like maybe not coming in a little bit lighter kind of thing, you know, mm -hmm. you're, uh, you have some sense of intentionality there. And, and I think it is worth kind of echoing with lenders. Look guys, you know, try to, try to stick to your knitting, try to stick to your knitting through times like these. You can't just get all crazy and try to buy your way out of it. Cause, uh, you can't, you can't, you can't, you know, you never out chase father time. You never do. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, you can't outrun delinquency. Yeah. Liquidity is a real big problem these days, right? Inverted. Mm -hmm. Say that again. We have an inverted rate market where basically we have lenders are sitting on top of portfolios written with a basic average yield of about 275. You know, if it's a prime lender, credit union, thing like that, you'll get like an ally who's got like a 675, 7.5 7 portfolio yield average. Uh, I'm assuming that's the gross average from what I'm reading and not a net average because you have to back out your reserves, operational costs to find out your net, net, net. But that said, you still have deposits and investors to pay for. And if you are only paying 1% and they can get 3% out there because the rate just went up, they're going to go down there. So you're going to have trouble getting money. And you're not going to be making that same yield in the portfolio you have. So you have to replenish with higher yield. And that's the challenge that all lenders are going into. This is where liquidity starts coming into question. And again, as the collateral starts getting repossessed and it becomes worth less and less and less, the value in repossessing it diminishes as well. And, you know, deficiency balances take forever to pay if they pay. A very small percentage of them do. And a lot of courts won't allow you to enforce deficiency judgment. So it's... We're heading into weird times. It's, you know, it's been a long time since anybody's seen a recession. And if, you know, there's different prognosis on how bad this is going to be. Some people think it's going to be really bad. Some people think it won't be that bad. Uh, but nobody's seen this in a while. So it's going to be a shock to the system. How long it lasts depends on how long it takes to build up. Um, you know, if it happens quick, then it's probably going to end quick. But it seems to be building slow problem we have here is that we've all sat through the recession. Uh, not the recession, I'm sorry, the uh, pandemic. And we saw mm -hmm. things we never saw before. Hoarding of toilet paper. We saw <laughs> ship shortages. We saw people just acting weird and crazy, okay? Mm -hmm. Slowly coming out of it. Unfortunately, the economies 
about to do something we haven't been used to. Uh, and so it's anybody's guess how this is going to look. But all I can tell you is, like going back to what Joel was talking about, if we're going to be lending people with $1,000 down, 96 month out loans at 125, 135% LTV, get ready to take it in the shorts, folks. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and, and, and there, there's, there's ways for us as, <laughs> as folks that support the lending industry to kind of think about different lenders in different ways. So Kevin, you were mentioning like, like a, a, a bank, uh, a lender that actually has deposits, um, they're not going to be as constricted as another financial services company that may be private equity funded and then has a line through a major lender. That line from that major lender is going to have a bunch of guardrails all over it. Things about your delinquency, your deficiency loss, what the paper looks like on the way coming in. And, um, so they're going to have a little bit of a tough time keeping up with the Joneses if the banks are making the bigger moves. But banks tend to be a little bit more conservative, so they don't want to go too far on the risk profile. So they'll stay in the box. It's in these other fringe areas where maybe you have a bad actor or a couple bad actors, maybe just tripping triggers and, and running, rock, running amok. I mean, you're going to have a – we'll probably have two to four lenders – that are regional um, that have grown and are going to go out of business in the next couple of years. Just call it. Right? I was just talking to an agency owner here in California who was asking me what he should do about a deal, uh, a, a lender out of LA. And it was a private, uh, privately funded uh, uh, lender. They didn't take deposits. They were going through commercial lines for their lending. And they had that same issue here where it's like now suddenly it costs this much for me to get my money, but I'm only making this much. And he's whining to the repossessor that, you know, I can't afford you to pay you that $15,000 in fees that I owe you. Yeah. And he asked me, well, you know, what, what should I do? And I said, you know, maybe you need to hold on to some cars here and have a long conversation. Nobody wants to do that, but he's telling you he's going to insolvency. So, yeah, if you're a lender and you, you have a bank line that's essentially funding, I don't know, think about it like a floor line. It's yeah. funding out 60 percent of of your receivables. Um, it's going to be tough. It's going to because as delinquencies go up, your balance of eligible receivables goes down. That means I have to put more equity into the situation. Yeah. Well, I don't have extra equity because cash mm -hmm. is tight right now. So you have this like jaws crunching down on you with the bank oh. keeping an eye and you feel you hear those footsteps behind you. You know that if you trip the triggers, it could run into a turbo down. It could run into a bankruptcy, a, a takeover, a default. They could change management. I mean, you, you throw it. Anything is 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 conceivable there. But mm. when you put a when you when you when you put a, a, a like a like a, a hungry dog against the wall and you're, and you're trying to like challenge him with a stick. I mean, he's going to fight you. He's going to fight back and he's going to make some, probably some crazy decisions. And this is what we tend to do when we're under stress, we get desperate. Mm. We make tough decisions. These <clears throat> individuals in that situation are going to be really struggling. You know, yeah. they're going to look for y'all to, to help them throw some hail Marys, you know, the, the, mm. on the repossession side, you know, and, and on the, on, on all sides. And so I do think it is is worthwhile thinking about these things in advance of knowing that the stress is coming. We're all going to feel it. Even the lenders are going to feel it. Um, hmm. The capacity issues that we have on the recovery side are very real. They've built up over time. We've been talking about them, right? We want to make sure that's satisfied as well. I think there is going to become, there's going to have to come some kind of balance, obviously, right? Because otherwise, you know, it gets crazy. You start having preferred people sending deals here and there, and then it, the network starts to break apart. You know, in Houston, wow. in Houston, we've repossessed, I think, 27 cars off of dealers' lots in the last two weeks. So the dealers are already feeling this this crunch, and, and that's just a start of it. And I, I agree with Kevin. I think it's a slow uh, turn here. But one of the things, on, going back to the repossession side, I, I truly believe that we're going to have so much choice in which clients we decide to work for that it's going to put some of these clients in a position to try to get to the top. So yep. a lot of these accounts are getting pushed out. You know, if you got a low recovery mm -hmm. rate, if you if we just know that your work is has a probability of seven percent, we're not going to even accept your work. And if we do accept it, it's going to get shoved to the back. So we're I think the recovery industry is in a very good place where we can actually decide who 
and what we want to work for. So we're in a good place right now. Well, from the Vaughn, you brought up a great point. I was just getting ready to mention that too. I remember back in 2008, nine in the Midwest, it didn't really hit till around nine, but we would get these phone calls to go in and wipe out dealers lots, entire lots. And uh, so I was curious because, you know, the dealer's going to feel. Those. So those you are still repos. We do yeah, that's, them a, yeah, that's, a that's what Vaughn that's was just floor talking floor. about. Yeah. Okay. So they're going to feel it too. If the, if sales aren't, you know, if there's inflation, people can't afford eggs. I can't afford my car. They're going to be sitting on a lot of money. That's what Jay was talking about earlier. Anybody watching a floor plan, that's, I call it a revolving line of credit for the dealer. And if he's got to make a payment on that every week, every month, every year, and that interest is going up, it's and sales are going down. Here's a problem. And just keep your eyes open is what I'm saying. If you're a transport guy. Yeah. And I would just like to call out that Ty, you answered the question, the lifelong question. What does that have to do with the price of eggs? And I commend you for answering that question. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> I, hey, I figured out the egg problem a long time ago. No, I'm kidding. Who did we lose? To Renee. Oh, Renee. Renee. We lost Renee. I'll text her. Yeah, I'll text her because um, we haven't sang yet. I know that we're, we're you know, we're know way over late. time, but this way is. Way over time. Well, and look at look at this live chat, you oh guys. I, mean, I can't keep up. <laughs> like, I don't think we've ever had this many as, as many times as I've been on with you guys. Actually, I don't think seriously, I've never seen the head count. Look mm. at this tie, and as soon as I say this, half the audience is going to jump. Um, no. But yeah, no, this is the highest head count we've had for this long, and the live chat's going crazy. So clearly, this is a really important issue. But there's um, a lot here. I mean, the, I mean, the Man, thing is, Vaughn's right. Vaughn, Vaughn's keeps this education thing. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but every time the repo friends come to visit us, I am literally blown away. Every time, every time. I've done this business for 20 plus years. And when I have Brianna and gang and, and Ryan, repo Ryan and Joel and Vaughn and Renee, all, I, I'm, I learn. I'm, you guys are amazing. And you really do. You have hey, a huge impact on everybody. You guys everybody. are amazing too. Oh. So thank you. Yeah, yeah, look at how far we've come since the first time we did a show. <laughs> I is. almost, I almost did it in front of the fireplace tonight, just for old times' sake. Wow. Old time. So was that a year ago? <laughs> I think it was over a year ago. Yeah, yeah probably over a year ago. Um, yeah. I wanted to ask. Did, so, did we properly cover? Hey, Darcy, you put it. Forwarders changing the rules. Did we properly cover this? Oh, I don't. Do we have time for that? I know, right? <laughs> so, where, where are we on time? What do we need to do? Um, do we do we have ten more minutes and then we wrap it up? Yes. I'm good. Does no. anybody does anybody want to sing? No. That's why Renee left. <laughs> yeah, she was like, "Sing." Bye. Nice to see you guys. Have a good well, one. Take it I, easy. I bye. wrote. I wrote the. Li I'll tell you what. Why don't we do this? We don't have to sing. But we might have to, you know, we just have to hum. You don't even know um, the beat. I can't even remember the beat. <laughs> so, <laughs> but up, up, but up, up. Here's the story of an auto oh, transport Trans who was searching for loads that he might haul. <laughs> he, might haul. Uh, he prefers he the prefers auto auction. Uh, uh, he he was all off off home. Home. <laughs> Here's the story. <laughs> Of a repo, repo agent, agent who was busy who with customers of her own. She stays up so late, busy, busy after, busy after midnight, midnight with lenders on the phone. Da 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 da. So no wonder when, when this agent meant this call, and they knew they it was all captured, captured on video. On video. <laughs> And the really crew, they would make the headlines. That's, That's the, the way, way we, all we, all we all became the repo bunch. The repo bunch. The repo bunch. That's the way we all became the repo bunch. Everybody. Everybody left. Da -da. Watching us so far, they all wow. left. We had 50 people. Now we're down to none. Yeah. Well, they're going to miss out because we have a special guest. Florence Henderson's going to join. Bring her in, oh, yeah, Jay. Yeah, Bring yeah, her in. Oh, yeah. Let's bring her up. Oh, man. That's, that's, 
you guys. I sent Renee the amazing. link. Her computer started updating. Oh, so she, don't you I hate that? I ordered it going from her iPhone. Yeah, oh, that's worse. Yeah. That's good. That was a great show, guys. And the live chat just amazing. loved it. We've got painful. We've got hearts. We've got nuclear hazard waste signals. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. Sounds oh, about like our daily man. our daily lives, you guys. Poor Vaughn. Vaughn and Joel, they're probably so sick of me. And Kevin, everyone here on this call is probably so sick of me because I'm always calling everybody about everything. I'm not sick of you. <laughs> Mike is making martinis in the super chat. Oh, you know, you know what? Mike if it wasn't it. Tuesday, because I, I could really use a martini after the Monday. But I did oh, make it out man. of jury duty today. So. Oh, you had jury duty today? I did, Ooh. but it got canceled because oh, of the weather. Nice. So. Oh, got out well, of and then they sell, Sometimes they send until... you home. There's all, I mean, it's the weirdest process. Do we, do we want to answer Darcy's question? Yes. Yes. Darcy, Darcy, lead us off. Yeah. Well, I, I think that what a lot of people don't understand, my thing about the whole uh, forwarders is, is this isn't a dig at them. It's that there's so many times that you have one forwarder, they all have the same lien holder. They all have the same uh, bank, but they all interpret it all differently. So you have the bank direct, then you have it through three or four other forwarders and the rules are all different. You can no charge storage. Yeah, no, no storage at day 10 for this one at $10, day 15 at this for $5, day 20 for $7, day one for $25. Um, you can charge a redemption fee for this one, but you can't for this one. In direct, you can, but you can't. I don't know about you guys, but we have spreadsheets upon spreadsheets to try oh. to figure this stuff out. So our, <laughs> our, our office workers cool. have to, consult it and you know i think what a lot of people don't understand is there's a lot of work on this end mm. and we all know like some of our direct clients all say what we pay you is what we pay the forwarders we know there's not a lot of margins between what the forwarders pay us everybody's here to make money um but we also know the rules don't change so why are they changing why are they different with the forwarders than they are and that goes back to your you know, sometimes a storage that they're collecting storage before they pay us. Maybe it's a glitch in a system. Maybe it's, oh, sorry, that's just how we have you set up. Maybe it's, you know, there's always a reason behind. And it's it's very, that I think is what a lot of our associations and Vaughn and are trying to do is let's streamline these processes because it'll make it easier for everybody involved if we can have a more of a collaboration between everybody. Mm -hmm. Hey Darcy, I, I want Kevin and I had a conversation uh, a while ago, and I think the word that we need to inject into this space is transparency. Yeah, mm -hmm. these borders, and and I'm, I mean, you know, everybody has a, a space and place in this industry, but we have to be honest. We have to be transparent, and that's until we're transparent and they're transparent with us. I think we're going to continue to have this this issue where we have twenty five different spreadsheets for the same mm -hmm. client across all these different borders. We well, and someone asked for your spreadsheet, Darcy, but the unfortunate <laughs> part is every lender, every client has different fee schedules with every every agency. Yeah. So that's actually proprietary information to us. Okay. So like we could, really can't just send that off. Well, well and it, it, the flatbed, you know, the, the blanket flatbed approvals. This one says you have to have a photo, but nobody else is saying you have to have well, a photo. Well, yeah, so I see what you're saying. And I... And, you know what's crazy is I spoke about on one of my very first panels that I ever did publicly. It was at the ALS uh, lender event. It was I was so nervous. It was the first time I ever spoke, and I was with Les Vaughn, uh, Joel with Les McCook, and you know I wore a pink suit because I thought I'm doing this with two guys. I'll never. No one else is going to wear pink. This guy comes down in a brighter pink jacket okay so now i'm sitting next to les in a, in a pink suit and he's wearing pink and then i gotta talk on my first thing and one of the things that we talked about was the lack of standardization in the fees and i and i picked on one of my favorite direct clients because i have this client direct and then i have them through lpr and then i have them through a forwarder three completely different fee schedules three completely different set of expectations post repo uh three nothing literally nothing matches up 
So this is something all those years ago, the very first time I ever spoke publicly, we are still struggling with. Yeah. Right. And I get it. Everybody's got to get their peace. But like at the end of the day, it's making it extremely difficult. And and you're right, Darcy, my AR client fee spreadsheet, it started out as one sheet. I literally think it's like 18 sheets long now at this point. There's like a fuel surcharge sheet and then a flatbed sheet and then a post like and then and then they're updating all the time. I'm like now it's kind of a running joke in our office because the people that I have to send this to when I update it, I'm like, yep, it's a uh, set updated fee sheet again. <laughs> like, Hey, <laughs> so um, there is no standardization across the board and it isn't something that we can you know publicly share. But I the closest thing I can relate it to is medical billing. Right. Because mm -hmm. it's like different insurances, different co-pays, different yeah. whatever. And so that is kind of the way we bill repo. It's it's insanity. So even though I have mm -hmm. like two accounting people that help me every day, I still have to go in and audit every single thing, because even if they miss that, you know, one flatbed fee or that one dolly fee or whatever that adds mm -hmm. up. And so it, it's absolute insanity. Yeah. Right, just bill me. All right, well, wheel out the uh, dolly of binders, and uh, I'll get yeah. right on that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. I, really, I really feel we are the only industry, like if you hire a plumber, come in your house, the plumber's going to tell you how much you're going to pay him for doing that work. We're yeah. the only industry there. somebody tells us they're going to hire us to do work for them, and they're going to tell us what they're going to pay us. I mean, that doesn't... Auto transport. Same. Yeah. See, I told you guys it's so parallel. Like you, we oh, actually man. have the same struggles. Yes, Darcy, you you are spot on, and I, I have to say this once again: it's our own fault. Yeah. At some point, we're gonna have to take ownership here, and collectively, and this is where the state associations play a huge part. Is trying to get the smaller so uh, repossession companies to understand why it's important not to do work for a certain fee. Um, there's just so much education to go around this. But here's a good thing. The clients and the forwarders are at least now coming to the table. Yes. They're at least talking to us. And that's a start. So we're mm -hmm. going to take a win when it's a win. But once again, we can't stop the fight. And we have to keep continue to push it, push in a direction where we are respected ourselves so others can respect us as well. Vaughn, I think that's one of the most paramount things I've heard you say since your tenure began as president of ARA, because while all of us on this call, like, let's be honest, and I'm not saying this in an arrogant way, we don't, we, we could, we would be fine if we aren't doing all of these things, right? It's really the small companies, the smaller mom and pop companies that need to get involved, that, that need us to support them because mm -hmm. they're the ones truly kind of losing here. And, and so we need those smaller companies to, to get in line here with us so we can, we can support them and we can help them because they're mm. really missing out by, by not having that. Um, because mm. every dollar and cent, I, I remember when we were super small and had two trucks and five employees, every dollar and cent mattered. Yeah. And, you know, so, so yeah, maybe I can survive if I miss, you know, or my accounting department misses a couple of flatbed fees or whatever, not saying that it would make me happy, but <laughs> how many of those can, can a super small company miss that, you know, because of the 30 to 45 to 60 day um, net that they're on with some mm. of these lenders or, and clients, can they survive if, if they're missing those fees and, and, you know, they're, they're going to miss payroll or they're going to miss those insurance premiums and they're going to go out of business. So really like we want as state associations, and I think the national associations too, we want to strengthen the network and we want to help those small companies survive because we're tired of losing people. It's not just about these big established companies. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind, we all started small. Yeah. And yeah. I, I think the smaller you are, the more you're likely to accept something that's just not beneficial to you because you yeah. have to make money. And so here, oh. we have to start trying to put them under umbrella where they're not accepting those $275 repos. And they can understand that it may hurt today, but it's for the betterment of the entire industry down the road. We can demand you know, a $700 repo fee, which I believe truly is what it should be. Outside of the storage and all the other fees, um, mm. 
you know, the repossession agents today have to really go out in the field and they have to be caregivers. They have to be de-escalators. They have to protect themselves. There's a mm -hmm. lot that goes into backing up a truck in a driveway at three o'clock in the morning. Uh, and, and in order for us to compensate them properly, we have to, the fees have to, have to increase. And we can't wow. say we're going to throw $40 in a bucket and think that compensates for the, the storage fees and the property fees and all the other things that's causing agents to have to pay people to take care of that work. We just, we have to change the narrative here. And hopefully yeah. conversations like this and all these questions I'm seeing on this, this board here, we have to answer these questions. And I, I don't know, Jay, if you and Ty can, can put this out to us, maybe in a, in a different format. Uh, offline so we can answer each one of these questions and make sure that these people out here that are small companies are getting the answers that they so they so much need and that's why they're here on, on this call today it's a really good point what i can do is so i when the chat moves fast uh some of it can't be recaptured what i can do is copy and paste as much of the live chat as i can i'll send it over to you share it with the group and then also um you know, obviously this is available on demand. The live chat does replay when you watch the show. So mm. if everyone's able to go back and watch the entire show and in portions and beats and whatnot and reply, and you can actually post information in the comments below, uh, maybe that would be a start. But yeah, I mean, we're really on to something that we are drinking from the fire hose tonight. Oh, man. What I well, was going to suggest... Can, yeah, go ahead, Yeah, Greg. anybody can email me. I think that, mm. that Jay and Ty put our emails in there. Email us the questions, and, you know, we'll create a thread with these guys. Um, I'm actually working on, on something for Vaughn right now regarding, you know, um, repossessions being assigned to transporters. So, you know, like, mm. we're we are, we are not here to ignore anything. We, we want to answer these questions. We want to educate. We want to connect. We have, we are transparent. Um, that is, that is our goal. I'm going to, um, I'm, I'm going to put everybody's email address in the live chat. Okay. Okay. Works. All right, cool. All right. Is that okay? I mean, like, right. That's okay. Like, yeah. cause yeah. I don't, I don't give out yeah. my, like, I don't, I don't answer that phone. Actually. It's just a prompt. Um, but um, Ty answers the phone. All right, here we go. Um, talk amongst yourselves. I'm going to put some emails in the thing. Maybe we'll land this plane shortly. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to encourage all of our transport guys to, A, be nice and learn from the repo guy next time you go there. That's number one. Number two, when you're there talking to the repo guy, gal, being nice and ed getting yourself educated, encourage them to become a part of this community right here. So that's where I'm going to kick it back to Joel. I think Joel's in charge of community stuff, aren't you, Joel? Wow, that that's a that's a tall order. I don't know that I want to put myself up there on on community stuff. I mean, at the national level, certainly, and we like to coordinate <laughs> with the states. But I I think at the that's at, what I mean. You, for co the, coordination, the states are are are. Wow, there's. I've seen the value of direct collaboration within the states. Brianna, you, you and you and the folks can talk at the state level that, uh, you know, just it, there's so much value at that state collaborative level at the national level. It's um, we're, we're, we're in the great position to be able to have a good voice on the Hill and um, we'll be, we're happy to share all those updates and we'll be sharing some at NARS and, and ARA convention this year. But uh, at the state level, there's so much action. There's so much juice. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, every state it faces its own challenges, and they're all so different. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to throw a plug in here real quick. Well, I was at... Go ahead, Ryan. I'll wait till you finish. Uh, you sure? I was just say at the it's you know for different levels there. Ty, what you were asking there was uh, you know. If transporters are trying to connect with repossession companies, maybe just go check out their website. There's ways, efficiencies and technology that we have out there to make things more efficient for them to streamline their operations that go on at our shop, to streamline everything just to get them in and out faster. We can prepare things for them and have everything set done so that way they can get in and out of our shop as quickly as possible. Ask us. Mm. We'll be more than willing to, to help you guys or teach you guys. Yeah, trust Man. me. We want you guys in and out as fast as possible. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> we do. I mean, we're just trying to make it efficient. I'm not being a jerk. I'm trying to make it easy. Like, I'm all about working smarter, not harder. No, I, I know exactly what you mean. 
and we can do that. So Brianna, you did you say you have an app or you have some website? Well, we all do. So we, we, okay. you guys have had so Jordan fun. on the show with me before. We've talked yeah. about clear data, right? Yeah. So yeah. like we make everything really digital. Like mm. um, I always say, I li- listen, I'm not a Kinko's. I'm not making copies. I'm not scanning in your BOLs. Like I give you, like you can do all of that before you get here. So all you have to do is, is, is giving your driver's license, right? Like, mm-hmm. And, and get in and out and, uh, and we stage the cars for you. We do all the things. So like, you're mm-hmm. not driving around my lot, like looking for your car, like vending random cars. Like it is there lined up at your appointment time, whatever, but you will mm-hmm. pay the price if you don't show up on your appointment time. Cause then I got to move that car and I got to restage it later. Mm. But I, I want, I'm interested in what Vaughn was saying. Cause he kind of got cut off. Yeah, I just want to give a plug. I mean, you know, we're all here today. If you're in the repossession business, transport locksmith, we're here because of Van Scoit and what Repo Alliance did for us back in 2020. You know, the HEROES Act was passed by the House in, two, I think it was May 2020. Had it not been for Stephanie Finley, uh, Dave Kennedy, um, uh, Marcel, um, the folks Les, at Harding Brooks, Harding and Brooks, if it Lynch had not been Renee, yep. that group, four mm. groups going and hiring, coming, first of all, starting the Repo Alliance. And then mm-hmm. going to where it matters most, you know, I don't really believe that, but where it really counts in Washington, having us hire a lobbyist form, firm, Van Scoyton Associates, and they're a power firm. They were able to stop that deal from passing the Senate. Had it passed, I really believe there would have been a moratorium on repossessions, maybe even right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Most, we most ladies, be most on this congressmen, and congresswomen, they do not know how much what touches this industry. There's mm-hmm. a lot of people that would have been out of business had that happened. So I think mm-hmm. it's important when we talk about state associations, we have to get to the place where we're all supporting the Repo Alliance because though that, that company is that we hired is not cheap. And we yeah. have to have someone representing all of our interests in Washington that listens out for key words that can ultimately end our business as we know. It. So wow. you know, we're gonna be we're gonna be really pushing that alliance here at NARS. Uh, and our ARA convention coming up in April, but we have to make sure that everybody collectively knows that there's a lot of things that touch the repossession industry. Yeah, yeah. And just to add Go ahead, to what you were saying, Vaughn, about Repo Alliance, I was on um, quite a few calls with the staffers and it was amazing how little they knew about our industry. And Van Scoy did an excellent job Um, having the repossession industry educate those staffers and they would come away with a whole different understanding of um, why allowing repossessions were important to the consumer. So thank you for mentioning Repo Alliance Fund because it it would have affected everybody listening, auto haulers, locksmiths, all of us. Well, and can I say one more thing about Vance White? They didn't just lobby for us. They also educated us, right? Remember they, they helped everyone with the ERC, the employee retention credit, um, you know, how to deal and navigate those, the, the, the EIDL and the S you know, the SBA and all of that stuff. So they really took additional time, not just supporting us on the Hill, but educating us on how to, you know, make the most out of, of that situation and, and bring in, you know, more revenue or just keep our, 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 our doors open. I mean, they really helped us all with that. And just to be clear, so everyone understands the lobbyist costs us $12,500 a month. Um, we have done all of the funding for that through crowdsourcing with ARA, um, and the state associations, every single penny raised goes to Repo Alliance. Nobody is taking a cut of that. There is no CEO salaries or executive salaries or expenses. Um, and everybody that has participated in the Repo Alliance has has donated their time and efforts without any compensation other than, you know, the reassurance that that we're doing what's best for the industry. Yeah, and that, that, that Repo Alliance does not just look for the ARA members or the Harding Brooks members or the state association that contribute. It's for the entire industry. 
And yep. that's why it's so important for us to continue to circle that wagon around them because if we're going to make a difference in this country as it relates to how people look at our industry, it, we're, it's going to require some, some representation in Washington for us, continued representation. Yeah, and I think this is the first time in our history of our industry as a specialized collections industry that we've had that kind of representation. So really, this is larger of an achievement than than most people realize. Yeah, and it happened during the pandemic. Yeah. Come on, yeah. come on. Yeah. That's big. Yeah. yeah. And, and what we went from three functioning state associations to now I think we're about to hit like 15, 18. Wow. So uh, I was actually just on the phone with Lauren Kimbrell today and they're getting ready to launch Tennessee. I just talked to Lisa from ALSCO in Oklahoma. They had their very first in-person meeting. I mean, uh, Dar Todd and Darcy got, um, mm. got, you know, Indiana started. Um, <laughs> it, so it, this really is like a grassroots effort and, um, and, and thank you to ARA. Um, you guys have been extremely support supportive and, <laughs> You know, you guys don't give yourselves enough credit. You guys have really stepped out of the ARA box and and given us the independence and support. And and all of us are super appreciative of that. I love that. You know, you know, at the end of the day, this is just this is real estate that was out there for us all to grab. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always been there for us to take and to fund and to get these people going, uh, the lobbyists, et cetera. I mean, I, that's what really inspires me is hearing the growth at the state and the regional level of some of the, the, the organizations. Look, I mean, I got to throw, I got to throw a little plug in for Calar as well. They've got a yeah. lobbyist and he was really effective at keeping a moratorium happen in the state of California. Now, you know, y'all may operate in other States and California may not be a big interest for you, but I'll tell you the way California goes. So too does the rest of the country in a lot of mm -hmm. ways politically and process wise. So we might've held off, um, a pretty uh, terrifying charge right there with the work yeah. that was done there. So, you know, and, and that's a testament to, to the value when you create these state and regional organizations, you can pull clout like that. You don't need even necessarily a paid lobbyist. You can get somebody with a good voice that's maybe on the, uh, you know, on the financial side that, that has access to some people. Um, these are some strings that we can always pull, right? Yeah. That's amazing, guys. Absolutely amazing show. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. I'm going <laughs> to. All right. I mean, if I say final uh, yeah. thoughts, it could be another final, half yeah. hour. So, well, can I just say one yeah, thing? Someone said they'll thoughts. donate to the cause. You can go to repoalliance.com <laughs> yeah. and Please. you can donate okay. right through Square. It's super easy. We appreciate it. Um, it's going to keep the industry going. And obviously that trickles down to all the other, other industries that we touch. So. That's a good call. I found this site. Yep. I put it in there, repoalliance.com. Mm -hmm. And um, repo. so you just, uh, we'll say that again. So you just scroll down or is there a Go to where can... it says our funding, how funding. we're funded. Okay. How we're funded. Yeah. I mean, here, let's do this. Um, instead of you guys watching me surf the web. Let's go ahead and uh, bring that over. So if you go to repoalliance.com uh, and then you go over to click funding, how we're funded. Okay, and then, then if you kind yep. of scroll down, it shows you how to, to click donate. right there. Oh, okay. Okay, and I'm just going to go ahead and get my credit card out and start typing numbers. Yep, so you just put in the amount you want to donate and you can go through there or you can mail a check if you don't feel comfortable using your credit card. Uh, and, and, and like we said, every penny goes to the lobbyists. Nobody is mm -hmm. even the, even the web weaver, the designer of the website doesn't take a penny from us. Everything is donated. Very cool. Wow. Yeah. 12, five a month, man. Lobbyists, you know, lobbyists, Ooh. I mean, that's how you get things done. You get a lobbyist. Yeah. Hey, I got you know, Look at us. Yeah. Uh, Jay and Ty, look, we, we appreciate you guys having us on this, this deal. Yeah. This type of collaboration where we bring folks yeah. together that would not normally talk is where we mm -hmm. really intensify education. So thank yeah. you guys. It's awesome. Uh, and we're looking forward to you guys having the show with us at NARS in April. Okay. Oh, Me there. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. And we'd like to invite everybody listening. Please nice. attend the North American Repo Summit. You can go to reposummit.com. You can register. We would love to have you attend and kind of meet us all in person. And there's so many more really cool people kind of like us. Mm. Um, there's going to be a lot of stuff going on. We're going to have a lot of exhibitors. So, yeah. you know, um, attend our event. 
Let's Where? do this. Um, yeah, I'm going to bring that up right now. Let's go ahead and bring up. Um, so that's repostsummit.com. I put the link in the live chat. Uh, but here, yeah, you go to repostsummit.com. Mm -hmm. And then let's see. Oh, you can join, join the, the newsletter. newsletter. Join the newsletter. <laughs> um, and then so okay, this is April sixth and seventh in Orlando. Yes, Orlando. Right, okay, cool. April sixth and seventh. What happens? Right. So what? We haven't been yet. So what happens there? What? What? Uh, yeah. What do we do? Well, let's go to speakers. Go to the. Oh, there's the agenda. Oh. Mm. Start with some golf. Six Thursday. Oh. Harding Brooks has a cocktail party. We'll shoot. Thanks, Renee. Yeah, come to our and cocktail party. I'm pretty party. sure. We'll do that. I think MV Track gives out a Corvette or something for a hole in one Great in the too. golf tournament. Well, and and I don't want to go over CFPB it, but you you just you just highlighted it. There's a uh, an update from Jennifer LaTourette, who's with Van Scoik, oh. who is our government relations person. Not to be missed. Not to yeah. be missed. And you know what? I'm glad you said. It. Actually, it's these these legislative updates. Mm -hmm are not to be missed you'd yeah. think you know oh i don't know and i don't you know i didn't go to harvard wow perfect time to go to one of these things immediately prior to that session as well the cfpb session we have um one of the folks that covers the markets uh ryan uh, his last name escapes me uh we've met with him uh dave kennedy and i on behalf of the ara and the um repo alliance we met with the cfpb and and uh, have have a good relationship with them. Uh, we're obviously uh, always looking to make sure that our standards and procedures are are most protective for the consumer, and we make sure that the folks at the CFPB know and understand that. So it's kind of a boon for us to have the CFPB and Jennifer coming. This is a type of thing wow. you have to go down to the hill and pay for, mm -hmm. you know, a bunch of money to go. Uh, we're trying to bring the power to the people. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. CFPB yeah. Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. You want to know about this, don't you? Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead and put that wow. link in the live chat. Plenty of homework tonight. There'll be a quiz in the morning. On <laughs> Friday, yeah. then, okay, panel, skip tracing. Oh, man. Repo demo. Wow. The repossession demo uh, was mm. a, a huge hit last year. Huge yes. hit. Yes. That was myself and Dave Johns. We doing, I think we're doing it again this year, if I remember correctly. I like the transportation crisis. Is that transportation dumpster fire, Jay? Could be. <laughs> I smell a dumpster fire. Wow. Oh. All right. So this is on our calendar in yeah, April. We, yeah. yeah. Get, get that going. Okay. So we just Thanks for the heads up and the invite. We'll calls. make it. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. We can put something together. That's great, guys. Thank you so much. Really neat. Nice. Thanks for the much. And Great you know, and we and we apologize to everyone in the live chat for the singing. Mm. Um, Renee, you're lucky you missed it. Oh, I know like, we uh, we sang when your computer stinker. restarted. Stinker. I know she's a stinker. Yeah. Don't well, worry, um, nobody loved it. They said we were terrible. We're gonna sing again at NARS, so yeah, uh, oh, don't no. lose your song lyric sheet. Yeah, keep that. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very Bye, much. Everybody. Bye. Thank, Thank you, Jay so and team. So Thank you, ATI. Thank Bye, you. Right. Bye, You're Bye, welcome. Everybody. Thank Good you night. very much. Yeah. Nice shout out. Everybody. So amazing. That was an incredible show. Good night, you guys. All right. Um, and so that is, oh, here, I'll end the meeting. Yep, the show is over and over and out. Thank you, live chat. Thanks, everybody, for participating. Um, there is so much more to follow as far as comments and uh, correspondence. And I've never put that many links in the live chat. That was awesome. And uh, so I just want to wrap up by saying that I want to thank Rapid Recon, Superflow Systems, McCullough's Transportation Group, Ship Your Car Now. Uh, I also want to thank in the super chat, Mike Buchanan was in there and... Uh, uh, Mark with Superflow Systems, and there was one other. See, and I can't even scroll back to the. There was so many live chats, I can't even scroll back. Um, might have been Artie or somebody. Can't remember. Mike, check one, two, three. My audio always goes down at the end of the show. Where is this thing? Um, I'm so glad that uh, you know if you're a new, if you're new to ATI, and um, it makes sense now to join us periodically on a Tuesday night. That's awesome. Thank you for doing that. Really appreciate it. 
ATI Auto Business, we are, we have roots in transportation, but it's all automotive now. The floodgates are open. Dealers, auctions, carriers, brokers, dispatchers, repo recovery, import, export, technology, equipment, insurance, and on and on it goes. It's a ginormous industry, and so we cover all of it. And so week after week, you'll find different verticals taking center stage and also when people take center stage we mean it let's have a fireside chat like for real right so like ati i there nobody followed a script uh in fact uh i'll probably be demonetized for all of this and um you know just trying to keep it real it's a tough industry and i actually am always surprised by how much everyone's expected to know like that blows my mind i can barely keep up all right. Well, thank you so much. All right. So what do we got next? NADA coming up. Wow. Wow. NADA coming up this week. Um, we have no show tomorrow. We got dispatching live on Thursday. I promise you that one's going to be another blockbuster. I'll put the link in the live chat. If you've never watched dispatching live, this is the one. Um, wow. I can't even say the title. Uh, it, it makes me cringe. Dispatching Live Thursday. Here's the link in the live chat. Go ahead and join us. That's going to be nuts. Because if you want to see the reality of auto transport, like from boots on the ground, load board, just walking through the mud of rates and, you know, craziness, Thursday is your show. Noon, Central Time, 90 minutes. Give yourself time. Maybe have, you know, cocktail on the ready. And then we're going to be live Friday and Saturday at 10 a.m. NADA live coverage here on ATI Auto Business. Ty is going to Dallas Thursday morning. He'll be live Friday and Saturday. I'll be here manning the station, holding down the fort as best as I can. I'm just a man with a desk. Ty is a man with a microphone. Together we are ATI. We're, try we're trying our best. So thank you so much for being a part of it and seeing it happen live. It's wild stuff. Join us. And then, uh, and then, man, I don't even know. Next Tuesday night, we're still putting that show together. That's how we roll. Thank you so much. Here comes the car hauler. Let us know how we can help. Send me an email, autotransportintel at gmail.com. I'm just going to grab that here since I'm here and it's been such a long show and, and you, you've been so patient and nice. There's his phone number. There's my email. Join us, won't you? Thank you so much. Have a good night. Stay safe and follow Follow all those rules. Yeah. Everything that just happened in the last two and a half hours. You're going to want to brush up on that quiz in the morning. Thank you so much. Good night. Good night.